Hello, Hello. Oh, and good wow. evening. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of Blood and Song. Uh, firstly, how are you all? Yeah, good thanks. We had a couple of big mm -hmm. events. Um, one of them was the Amer American presidential election, so we won't be discussing that. Um, let's keep politics off the stream. Um, let's keep it in the game anyway. Um, and uh, the other one was fireworks night. So I couldn't tell what the fireworks were for in my area, what, which, what they were celebrating in the UK, whether it was the 5th of November or the, the election <laughs> results. But yeah, what about everybody else? Yeah, we're pretty good. We're all uh, locked in, locked down. Happy days here. More time to spend with um, with loved ones, that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we've got a second lockdown here, haven't we, in, in, the, in um, England. I was corrected. We were corrected just briefly before the stream, yeah. not the UK, England. I've got too um, many Welsh friends for us to get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we're just grinning and bearing it and, and just doing our best. The, we find these sorts of things useful because they, um, they keep us connected um, and creative. So, so um, I'm actually jealous of everyone else in lockdown still being a teacher, meaning I actually have to go to work every day, which is yeah. just you and me both. awful. You and me. Uh, yeah, me too. I have to go to work as well. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You know, you work in the same right. room that you're streaming from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's still work, you know. The old nine to five. The all old... of, yeah, that's one thing Mind. you can say is we're all still working. I think that's yeah. I think that's what we're the moaning. None of them have a nine to five. They all have like an a seven till ten. Actually <laughs> actually to be fair, to be fair, working in an office job has made me realise that Dolly Parton was lazy because I've never I've never actually worked nine to five. I worked like an eight or six. Do so... not speak ill of Miss Parton. <laughs> that is a big no. <laughs> Take it. Dolly's name in vain. So what sort of musician works nine to five? You know, they'll work sort of I don't know eleven to to twelve. Have a break for lunch. You know, maybe sort come of back at two. Yeah, exactly. Wrong crowd. Wrong crowd, mate. <laughs> Dan and I just wither inside. <laughs> Must not um, say anything. So talking of withering inside, um, my moustache isn't coming along as much as I expected it to. Um, but that's okay. It's not about me. It's not about me. Our it's November... Your, Brad's yeah, your, is, yours Brad's is looking wrong. Can we get There's a bit of close real up? fighter pilot stuff no, going on there, Brad. Right. I would say it's, I'd say it's almost I fighter pilot. like my dad. It's, it's insane. <laughs> he, he had the raf stash. Mm. Oh yeah, I was go I was gonna yeah, say yeah. Not in the UK, Royal Air Force. Yeah, it looks sort of police issue, doesn't it? Your moustache and it is veering <laughs> as Johnny said, it's veering into into militaristic. I like it. Yeah, could you get a photo of your dad <laughs> yeah. to put next to it next to you when you've fully grown it? See, oh, I'm sure to see I can find one. I'm sure there's a wedding photo that he's got. What about a creepy cut out mask? <laughs> we could <laughs> no, just take it off. Oh my god, it's the same or, person. Don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I'm November. Um, uh, charity drive still up uh, feel free to locate it on our social media and donate it's for uh, men's uh, mental health awareness and physical health awareness so uh yeah which i also feel this is this supplements a lot of uh, my mental health requirements which is nice so also if anyone at home um if you guys are doing anything like this um give us a shout out on blood and song on on our twitter or our instagram or even our facebook page connect with us and hopefully we can uh, share the love um and sort of you know, spread all this stuff around and we can watch hopefully what you're putting out because if it's half as valuable to you as this is to us, to me, um, we'd love to be a part of it. So, and, and if especially anyone with else that... Is... Sorry, yeah, say, if anybody else has grown a tash, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I want to see all of them. Some solidarity, please. <laughs> Christine's <laughs> tash fetish coming out on live stream. Uh, now. No, it. I can't. I Absolutely. can't grow on myself. My dad mm. also equally had a raft tash for mm. <laughs> for a very long time. Mm -hmm. He was. He was. Uh, Many people tried to persuade him to shave it off for charity and he refused, so... <laughs> yeah. Well, as it is also fairly close to Remembrance Day in the UK, which is obviously a very solemn affair, I think that everyone tonight should take a moment before we start to think of all the fallen characters that we've lost in games through the years. <laughs> Johnny, uh, is that... Yeah, is that's that about the same, isn't it? I think, <laughs> I think that's Basically slightly... Johnny lost a character in another game that we've played recently. Yeah, still, it's still, it's still a sore. Of weeks ago. He's grieving, brutal. so forgive him. Uh, I was thinking more of, you know, Brad lost a character in a campaign That's in another true. campaign and then someone called Scalic died rest in peace Scalic uh, there's you know all these characters we've all lost them and you know it, it can be a very personal thing whilst our NPCs and characters may not have suffered quite the same as the two generations that lived through the most brutal 
situation in human history. In a way, is it not comparable? No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. We can imagine good link. Good link, good link yeah. effort. Sure. I'm, I'm trying to pull us back to the game board. Um, good link, good link. Good job. Well, with that sort of awkward clunkiness, why don't we awkwardly clunk into tonight's episode of Blood and Song? Right. Well, last time we left off, our brave party had met in this small town or small village of Redwater and had been celebrating the Festival of Falling Leaves when the festival had been attacked by a mysterious creature which had injured the town's Presidius. They had undertaken a quest to transport the Presidius to Cinderbane, the nearest sort of large settlement, to get her some healing, as it seemed to be beyond the party members. They had travelled west on one of the roads and had had an eventful week where you had met a ambassador who had travelled from an Indiri, uh, Sitkaram, and he had given you um, a quite a warm welcome and some food and you'd spent an evening chatting to him and getting to know a little bit more about each other and the wider world. Before you set off again east, uh, westwards, uh, you'd come just to the entrance of Andra's past when we finished, which was a giant a kind of a Rhodes of Colossus style statue that um, stood over a large ravine at the entrance. It was of a beautiful woman with earthen skin, uh, curled black tresses. Her hands were open in benefaction down towards the road. She had one normal eye and one missing that had been replaced with a glass orb. And she seems to be a rather dilapidated statue of the goddess Andra. And that is kind of where we'd ended. So we open with you standing at the foot of this statue. Is there anything anyone would like to do? Um, how big is Beautiful. this statue? Oh, um, 60 feet high. Um, so as uh, people know from other episodes, the uh, phaser is, is very much... Uh, a fan of Andra. <laughs> She's definitely a worshipper of Andra. So she, uh, have we, have the, has the cart stopped as we get there or is that, what do, what That's do we up to you. Would it, would it be all right, gang, if it stopped at the foot of it? Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. That's all right then. Only for um, a short while. That's okay. Well, uh, uh, FaZe is going to uh, hop down, um, bow at you all, make her excuses and make a beeline towards the foot, the nearest foot of this uh, statue. Um, she's gonna, she's not gonna tell you guys what she's going to do at all. She's sort of a little bit excitable, but a little bit in the zone. She's gonna get a little backpack off. She's gonna pull out a little package inside that um, of leather, unroll it. Um, and inside there are little wooden statues well, one wooden statue and two clay statues. Um, the wooden one is of a tree um, and she pulls that out and it's very pretty and it's very well carved. Um, and then the other two characters are little clay characters. One has little goggles on top of it. So you might think it's a little bit her. So she's gonna put that under the tree. And the other is a figure that you've not seen before, um, but also looks looks as if he's, he's uh, sort of some, it's a male and she puts them next to him and as she puts them closer to the tree the little wooden tree it starts to glow a nice green color um, she's also going to pull from another pocket in her backpack uh, what looks like a freshly carved clay uh, model of a cart which is of, of which looks rather like our cart 
but a little pr prettier and probably a little bit more robust than the real thing um <laughs> and she's going to place that under the tree as well then she's going to get her teapot and she's going to start brewing a little pot of tea and that's where she's going to stop for a moment and that's if everybody else wants to do anything else Firstly, you can take some inspiration for that. Thank uh, you. That's marvellous. I've already got some. Yeah. Oh, damn, fantastic. I can't get two, can I? No, oh, sadly nice. not. Thank you. I haven't got any. Can I take it for her? I'll just hold on <laughs> no. to it for her. No, it's okay. I'm new to this. There's a spear that goes it. flying past six Smith's ear and returns back to my hand <laughs> as he says that. Um, so as, uh, as kind of this is happening, um, Seed is going gonna, is gonna to back off a tiny bit looking up at the huge statue towering above them all and Seed's like gaze is absolutely caught on Andra's missing eye that has been replaced by this mysterious kind of glass orb um, and as Seed is looking up at Andra's face and just staring at the eyes specifically um, what you see is it's almost like Seed is going into some kind of memory of something um, and you see their bodies start to change. And if you didn't know better, you'd be convinced they were standing somewhere cold. They're kind of hunched over. They look like they're shivering a little bit. And then almost as though Seed doesn't know what they're doing, they take their drum out and they start to play. And then Seed begins to sing. Say you'll be mine forever. Say that you'll always be true For wherever you are No matter how far I only have eyes for you Say that we'll dance together Endlessly into the blue For wherever you go I hope that you know I only have eyes I only have eyes I only have eyes For you And then they just oh God, that was so amazing But then after they finish singing Their body returns to normal they put the drum down and they just wander back over like nothing happened. They also take some inspiration. <laughs> Seed, what a wonderful song you played. I'd, I'd love to learn it one day. I'm sorry, I, I don't know what you're talking about. What song? The <laughs> song you were just, just now, you started with your drums and then ended in a beautiful something about uh, eyes beautiful... something about eyes it yeah felt... yeah hmm and some of those um gourds in it that i felt underneath you know that's notice a voice in a drum but i i heard like um like a bass like uh, some things like a you know what are those new things that hammers on the strings thing <laughs> I, really... I would like to see if this is an act by seed that um... she's not realizing that is a Make song. me an insight check, please. <sighs> the poor rolling continues. Um, that's an 11. See, what would you reveal for an 11? Um, as far as you can tell, Seed is being truthful. Doesn't seem to be alive. Genuinely um, confused. Looks utterly confused. Um, and uh, has obviously also picked up that you were saying something about eyes. Uh, and just says, I, I think I remember something about eyes. I was just thinking about it a minute ago. That statue seems to be missing an eye. Did anybody else notice that? It's quite yeah, big, but made I of didn't... glass. Yeah. It yeah, is a quite quite a well song about it, feature though. <laughs> of uh, Andra's past, yes. Oh, really? Well, you learn something every day, uh, brother? Well, yeah, yeah, is. I'd love to know more about this part of the world. You know, we know a little bit as we pick it DM. up, you know, but... Is it a well-known feature? <laughs> yes. Now. Okay, good. I accidentally <laughs> put your words in your mouth there. <laughs> Fine. No, it is. It is. The statue is very well known. I would say that the glass eye isn't a detail that would have interested you enough to... It's not something, you know, come and see the statue with a great glass no, eye. Yeah, yeah. It's There is a statue 
it's just been there so long that um it's like and this is an incredibly local reference so i do apologize to everyone who's not been to aylesbury it's sort of like condom finger guy it's just there people don't notice any detail it's basically a statue of someone called john hamden who was pointing and for our entire adult life growing up he always had a condom on his finger um <laughs> So much so, that so I don't even right know who John Hamden is, but well. I know who who Condon <laughs> Finger Man is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's that kind of thing that, you know, someone could put a crown on it this week, next week it might be a bin bag, it's just the statue is always there. It's sort of the D&D equivalent of the statue that's always got something strange on it, but no one really notices. Um, while this is conversations going on, uh, the tea has been brewed, and um, uh, Faze is going to... Um, pour a little bit of tea on the on the foot almost as if she's bathing it um and then or as much as she can reach <laughs> and then um and then pour a little bit on the two on the three pottery figurines that are next to her as well and she's going to carry on brewing another pot of tea as she's okay. doing that can you just make me a perception check please Faisal? Okay. uh doo -doo -doo -doo. seven sixteen perfect so on foundry uh, you might need to refresh your screen. This is the first time we've done this. Um, you will notice, Vaza, if you go to the little book icon, at the bottom you will see something called Letter by Andra. So at the feet, the statue is you're bathing it, and you go to turn back to start bringing another pot of tea. Yeah. You find a letter yes. folded over there. So you can open that and you can read it either to the party or to yourself. I don't mind. Okay. Um, I, I think I'm going to be quite puzzled by this, and, I, and yeah, I'm going to include everybody in this. Um, uh, who's who's near me at the moment? Is um, are they all? Are they all? Are I've you guys come over still to get some cart? tea. Six Smith has come over to get a little okay. bit of tea. Any excuse for a bit of tea? So okay, well she's just reading it to herself, and then uh, she'll just say, "Oh, this is really, this is really strange." Um. And she's not yeah. sure what to do because I, I I think this this might be a prayer. I'm not sure, and you know, um, but she says, or it could be because it's written as a letter. It might be to whoever finds it. So, uh, but it says, "Sacred Earth Mother, please let me reach Elder Spire safely and guide me to one that will aid me. Earth and stone, root and bone, Calandra." This is very strange. It's um, signed by Calandra, is it? This yes. uh, this letter. Okay. Um, may I ask how old the piece of paper might be, or is it is it paper? Mm. Is it um? Make me an intelligence check, please. Oh lord. Okay. Um. Sixteen again. Okay, with a sixteen, you'd say the paper feels um. A little damp, but the ink's still holding. You'd estimate it to be probably no more than two, maximum three weeks old. Okay. Can it was fairly well concealed, and the weather has just turned in the last week. Okay. Six Smith, see if it's like the handwriting, do like a little Sherlock Holmes thing and sort of see, was it written with in haste, in fear, or was it written in sort of reverence and, you know... Make me an intelligence check. Out. Uh, 17. Not bad, 17. 17, I mean, it's hard to really tell. The handwriting is quite scratchy. Um, the script of Chinella is, is not your native language, but you can tell from the hand that it it seems okay. There's nothing, it doesn't look, you know, with blotches or spots, like it was scribbled in absolute haste. It might just be someone with messy handwriting. Okay. Um, uh, Octavius, you're uh, you're from around these parts. Where's uh, what's it called? Black Spire. Elder Spire. Elder Spire. Um, Elder Spire. Oh, that's quite far to the east, but I haven't been there in quite a long time. So is it in the opposite direction to what we're travelling? Uh, yes. Okay. Gosh. Okay. Um. Not a name that anyone recognises. It means. Is well, a common name in Chinella? Uh, Calandra or oh. Elder Spire? Uh, uh, Calandra. It's uh, a name. <laughs> <laughs> um, could I see if there are any signs of... I mean, it's two to three weeks now, isn't it? Um, 
Gosh, I don't know. Let Make me, me a survival check with disadvantage, please. Or a Aww. nature check with disadvantage. Okay, we'll do nature. Um, I've only got 1d20. So that's 13 and uh, 12. <laughs> so 12. <laughs> okay. For the 12, you look around. Uh, there are signs of you know hundreds of people coming through here with just scuffed footprints everywhere where it was behind the actual or kind of tucked into the feet of the statue it was clearly placed there with some reverence um but there doesn't seem to be anything else that you can find okay. i think I'm, I'm going to replace it because it's a prayer to um to andra and i i wouldn't want andra to miss it basically my idea so that's what i'm going to do with it now that we've anyone have the mind you know that remembers many things the the keenest of minds does anyone have the feet keen mind is well, what I i'm getting at I don't so know. Why, why don't you just write it in your book um yeah if you're oh, interested okay. in it yeah. but i mean it feels like someone's someone's reverent prayer maybe yeah. maybe we just leave it you know um yeah it doesn't seem to be bread. that much information from it other than that someone's trying to get to Elderspire safely um and she's looking for help to get there so um maybe if we find kalandra uh, at some point in our journey but um it does seem to be behind us but with i'm it still a very aware that path, octavius well it see it needs help be dangerous so octavius would know that the path to Elderspire is, well Elderspire is the capital of chinella so okay. it's str you're on one of the main roads it was sort of a few main roads away it's certainly a long travel but it's fairly safe okay, okay. Well, um, the I'll... army regularly patrols these roads okay I'll make, I'll make a note of it in my book so i've got the details um and so, we so can it's more of a then. traveler's prayer than uh it is a fear yeah, i think so um and also um I don't know how the rest of the group feels, but obviously we, we have some pressure to go in the opposite direction to Celia. So course, I don't I mean, know how everyone feels. We certainly shouldn't um, shouldn't chase after someone's um, travel prayer. It's it nice is. to know where yeah, things yeah. are. Eh? But if it's... if it's not too much trouble, just that, that spot of tea. Um, <laughs> that I okay, have, have, you, have you got your own mug? Have you got your own mug? Uh, I, I'm not sure if Six, Six Myth would always have a a, a sort of, of rations type sort of thing, army issue sort of tin cup that is universal. So he'll use it for everything, I think, including, you know, washing himself. It's just a complete sort of all in one. Oh, <laughs> what a, he what offers a this horrible. filthy tin. <laughs> but like filthy in the same way that like, um, you know, a grill pan or, or, you know, is filthy. You're not supposed to clean it. You oh, just fuck. wipe it. Or drink yeah, tea. Oh, I'm not exactly. sure that works with <laughs> drinking utensils. <laughs> I think <laughs> you, um... he's spiced it. It's been spiced with all the different foods mm, and drink right. and everything. So you just know, you've got to have that habanero and water. Good tea. Not I mean, I mean, good tea. I mean, Sean and I, uh, our dad had a teapot that the inside was just stained tea, tea stained on the inside. So it's sort different. of that, that sort of different. character. <laughs> so very... Six Myth would say something like, um, Trust me, if you don't, if you try a little bit of this after you've poured it for me, and you don't like it, then I'll I'll never trouble you for a tea, and I will make the tea. I, t I tell you, what, you I have time. I ha I have my own mug, so you you help you you knock yourself out. Um, I'll, I'll, ah, you I'll don't know what you're missing. <laughs> I think I do, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Seed's going to approach Pfizer and kind of uh, crouch down next to her. She's making the tea and say. I can tell that you are a bit worried about our fellow traveller, Calandra, and I just wanted to reassure you that if we didn't meet her on the road on the way here, it's very unlikely that she got herself into trouble anywhere between here and at least halfway to her destination. It's just my two copper on the situation, but if it helps. Thank you, that really does. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like some tea? <laughs> oh, that's a very kind offer, but... I don't think you've got enough to go around for me as well. Don't you worry about it. And Seed kind of awkwardly shuffles away. Okay. So um, now we've done the the ceremony. I think you know the the with the, the she's weed. gonna leave her little 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 statues there for a moment, and then just take a another chance to have a look around and see what else might be around. Um, I think you said in a previous thing that the the feet will painted marble but there's been lots of bits chipped off them yes um if you would like to have investigate around the feet you could make me an yeah. investigation check 
Or natural 20, kids. Um, investigation plus. plus five. 25, kids. 25. What am I going to find? <laughs> what am I going to find? Goes to the good <laughs> stuff at the back of the book. Um, <laughs> so for 25, as you're looking around, you don't find a lot. There's bits of, say, broken marble. It's clear that this statue has had bits chipped off it by travellers or possibly erosion. It's, it's sort of hard to tell. Um, the chips look fairly uniform, but the way this marble is has been cut, it would chip off fairly uniformly. Uh, around it, as the weather's been turning damp in the last few days, the soil is starting to get a little damp. What's interesting as you look out is that because this is standing over, you see the ravine kind of growing on either side. The top of the ravine, even though the grass and the fields you've been travelling through have slowly turned kind of oranges and reds, the grass at the top remains absolutely perfect red. Uh, sorry, perfect green. But the ground, the earth, as it goes into the passage itself, it sort of looks almost sandstony. Okay. Oh, and so are we have we met the side of the ravine so we've got one have we just come up to a foot that's or, or are we at the start of the ravine is it like going downwards you're into at the it? start and it, it's actually the hills are coming up around oh, you. Okay. okay i will keep watch from the skies and i turn into a hawk and fly up into the air over the ravine okay. jesus christ <laughs> oh my god this is the first time you've done this in front of everyone isn't it <laughs> first time you could that's I'm quite also painfully aware Davey. that I wouldn't this... say Jesus. Yeah, he's out of earshot now. <laughs> Unless you have message, you're gonna have to wait for him to come back down. <laughs> I can't Maybe wait for him to Yeah, perception check whilst you're up there. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I need the hawk stat block. Give me a sec. Yes, you do. By I'm circus flame. I'm just gonna have um, make it advantage more on. I think sight it check. has advantage on perception with sight. Yeah. Cool. So, are you all entering the ravine then? Yeah, I think Maybe. I would. Well, uh, Octavius was our driver, so uh, Lack, I up. guess I Lack guess I'll hop up. up. All right, we'll hop up front. Before you've done, I'm up. Boop. I mean, the... how hard can it be? Yeah, make an animal handling check. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what. I was how thinking. hard can it be? Famous last words. <laughs> this is how we find yeah. out. <laughs> this is how we find out. Hang on, I'm just using my D and D Beyond app. Yeah, animal handling, huh? Let's roll the d20 and then worry about the rest. So I rolled a four um, and I get <laughs> plus four. So that's eight in total. Good eight. I mean, I don't think it's the most difficult thing in the world to convince a mule uh, to go forwards when its choices are forwards or into a wall or into yeah. a statue. So it starts slowly, if somewhat uh, recalcitrantly, moving forwards. I'm going to well, quickly. This is sedentary. I like it. It's. Um... Come on. <laughs> so my uh, perception check was a 24. 24. With a 24 from your vantage point, you can see that this pass sort of narrows and widens at various points, almost becoming like a gorge. And it, it travels for as far as your eyes can see, even as a hawk. You have a feeling that you'll be in this pass for a couple of days. But there's nothing else you can see. I mean, with your hawk eyes, you spot some rabbits darting through the ravine, but that's it. I believe it. Wild Shape only lasts for an hour, so... Um, an, an hour into our journey, I will come back down. Okay. Well, uh, I would like someone, please, to who is on the ground, to make me a survival check to see how this day's travel goes. I'm happy to do that if you want. No. Whoever's leading the party. Can be, I think it would lack and I are sitting up front to be fair leading because, in, in lieu of um, no, but it would be six month leading in lieu of mm -hmm. the other um, you're right, you're army right. personnel yeah, sure. has, or something you know has left. So he would have to be doubly check then, sort of. Um, you're muted, brother. Muted. 19. Okay. No, I know ah, it's good because that, that was a good oh, exclamation. Good. Can you just roll me a d8, please, Sixsmith? Uh-oh. But I feel... Ripper, you can roll this d8. You uh, roll the d8. Sixsmith, roll me a oh, d8. Oh, dear. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm going to include him. Seven. Seven. And uh, Ripper, can you roll me a d6?
Oh, sorry. I totally thought you were talking to somebody else. A six. six. It, was, it was a beautiful smile, right? You just sat there while everyone watched I was, you. I was waiting for it. When the smile happened, I thought, <laughs> there's the number coming now. <laughs> I thought it was building tension, yeah. right? <laughs> yes, let's go with that. Six. Interesting. Interesting. So, for the first um, hour of your journey, everything seems fine. After the hour, sweeping down and, uh, I was going to say evaporating back, but that's not at all accurate, uh, forming back into a humanoid, uh, you find Octavius rejoins you, and your journey goes on with seemingly little problems. It's quite slow going, with the mule being slightly recalcitrant, but... Um, you travel on for about two, three hours, get past lunchtime, and then you see six shadows ahead of you, about 500 yards. What would you like to do? Poor Everyone little newly draw my weapon no. and keep it by yeah. my side. I'll, um, I'll probably pull out my crossbow to have it. Can I, Octavius, can I try back further to the rear of the cart? Can I try and see what those shadows are? Like, do they look like human shadows? Do they look like rabbit shadows? Make me a perception check. Do they look like shadows of the sun? Ah, oh, that, that's a one. Uh, <laughs> mm, yeah, the shadows. The sun's <laughs> just glinting off some rocks. Ripper, from that I can't tell you. That, that story you were telling me is brilliant. <laughs> um, well, you know, yeah. And then, uh, and then you know... That's how, that's how I lost my left laces. Right. I don't wear laces, so I... Mm, yeah, well, you know. Octavius looks down and notes that Ripper is not wearing any shoes with laces. <laughs> I didn't well, say, he's lost I didn't them, say huh? for this pair of shoes, you know. <laughs> Obviously, come on, mate. What, you've only got one pair of shoes? Um, I don't mean to alarm Everyone, you, but pay I think attention. Some... Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So as you travel towards this, are you just travelling towards it still? I have stopped the moon. I've stopped oh. the mule. How far away are they? About 500 yards. Okay. How many uh, do we have a scout? Feet, I, I, call, I call out, Oh there, friend feet. or foe. No response. Um. Uh, I will... I, it, a good suggestion, Sixsmith. I will scout ahead. And I would like to try and stealth and scout. Make me a stealth check then, please. Say sixteen. You've been travelling for a couple of weeks, so you must know the signal by now to give us if there is any trouble. And that signal is Octavius. You believe yourself to be completely hidden as you stealthily move through this sandy uh, ravine. The walls to the side have enough boulders have fallen off that there's enough to try to kind of hide behind as you sneak up. And then you find, uh, well, can you make me another perception check as you get closer, please? Muted. It's not that is a 14. Cut out no, 14. <laughs> uh, so with that 14, what you see is the shapes seem to be sort of large-ish. As you get closer, again, sort of drawing your weapon and thinking carefully, you notice that these six large figures turn out to be six large rocks. And around them, hopping and skipping, is a small family of mere ribbits, which are like a cross between meerkats, or the it's kind of the bottom half of a meerkat, small fluffy tail included, and the top half of a rabbit, really long fluffy ears. And they're all just sort of running, they're kind of sand coloured, got dark spots on them, massive pink noses. And they seem to be just happily chittering and playing, making dens and burrows under these rocks. I move silently back to the camp. It all seems clear, but we should move with caution. Um, there are some animals near some statuesque rocks. There's nothing to be too concerned about yet. Uh -huh. What kind of animals? Oh, it's the mere, mere rabbits. It's just, just this animal. I'm not sure how, how, how it... big is a how big is a mere ribbit? She says, being three foot two. Uh, about half, about your, half your size, yes. That's still pretty pretty. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, that's, they that's, are. 
they are very cute, so I wouldn't worry. Oh, well, nothing oh. cute can ever kill you. That's that's for sure. I mean, they've said that about me. You should see the, uh, should see some of the fights I've won. Has yeah. anyone <laughs> called you cute ever? Of course. No one called you cute. No. Uh, just you our mother. Cute, all right? Especially in that little yellow robe of yeah. yours, yeah? I, I, I love think, that for you. I think, thanks. I think. Of course. It's very striking, that robe. I don't know. Uh, has anyone ever asked you if it's... Uh, if it's good for blending in, or uh, I thought... It works uh... in the sand, huh? Uh, yeah, 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 good point. Good Sometimes point. the best way to hide is to stand out. Ripper could tell you. Of course. <laughs> but why would I need to hide? Anyway, you do know you know wanna... what mother used to say? To stand out? Is to stand up. Yeah, all Ooh. the time. I... She all... <laughs> move... always said that. <laughs> As we move, I suggest we stay in a formation with the cart in the center of us. One person at the back, one person at the front. And to either side. Oh, well, yeah, well, that's, that's that's a good cool. plan. I'll I'll take the front. Uh, do you mind taking the rear, Octavius? I, would take I don't the know. Rear. That's not a problem. Okay. Does anybody mind awfully if I stand on the cart with my crossbow? <laughs> so what if I've you make a longer. bit of tea on the side? You know, we always <laughs> need a little bit into battle. No, no, I I don't think I should put any kind of heat source uh, that's very strong enough for tea on on this particular cart. <laughs> it might, it might, it might. It might catch fire. Uh, <laughs> adding third degree burns to Celia's already yeah. grievous yeah. injuries could be yeah. hilarious. But she Black will injury. smell nice of tea. <laughs> yes, this of jasmine true. and bergamot. And... Uh, Lack, are you gonna are you gonna restart the meal? Um, I'll um I'll walk by the side if that's alright. If you want to take the mule, Ripper. All right. I'll take the mule. Make me an animal handling check, please. Five. <laughs> The it's mule... really easy. All you have to do is point it in the right direction. It will, it's fine. And the mule looks away. at you, bats its ears, can I, can I just... and just spits at the floor. I fed it cheese, all right? It's got to remember that. Ripper, you take the back. I'll take the mule. Fine. I'm just... The mule looks at you with this look of, do you remember when you gave me the runs? I remember. Well, thank God none of us can speak it's to a, animals. It's, oh, a vengeful, well... it's a vengeful mule. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Stunned by your beauty, Ripper. Of, of course. I mean, who isn't, you know? That or indigestion. Uh, as I thing. remember, it's, it's okay. He's gone now. <laughs> Make me an animal handling check, please, Octavius. <laughs> On the back of the car. I think I've rolled a natural one, in. so that is a... Um... <laughs> this mule, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> so that's a five. <laughs> Again, it looks at you with a look of, and you abandoned me. Uh, <laughs> if this gonna... mule had a personality, it would be described as mulish. Oh, oh, it seems to like no. you. It seems lack to like you. Lack will lack. move back. I'll, I'll, lack will move back. I, right obviously, uh, I don't know. It just reminds me of Granny um, <laughs> a little bit. I just have to talk right, and I tickle it behind the ear, and I rolled a 13 plus 4, so it's 17. It is twitch in pleasure it looks back and kind of gives you a grudging look of acceptance and starts moving off a little bit faster than it did earlier as you um traverse the 500 feet you see the five large fallen boulders and you easily steer the cart around them and you do see skittering and running in a, not in a scared way they're, they're not that bothered by the existence of humanoids around them these mere ribbits uh, just been playing about a foot and a half tall, nice long floppy ears, and they are very cute and not at all deadly. Mm. Uh, coat worthy? Ask no. for a friend. You monster. Just, no. <laughs> just, in, uh, just in case, Octavius knows that these are just harmless animals, right? <laughs> Yes. yes. I mean, you are welcome to try. Yeah. How much meat do you There's get? There's going to be like an alpha meat. We we do we do stomach. have now we've got one extra day's rations, so don't worry, we don't have to murder any rabbits yet. But if we do, shotgun the fur. I've got a lovely idea. Yeah, for just out, just out of interest, how much meat is on one of these things? Make nice boots from it, couldn't you? Ripper? How quickly can I write a stat block for a BB? <laughs> rabbits. No. Um. So. <laughs> They look, there's meat on them. You could certainly slaughter them to eat them. Mm. These cute, defenseless, fluffy <laughs> creatures. Okay, Are you so trying to make everyone vegan? Because that's, that's, that's how you go, isn't it? No, so, just describing yeah. them. So he's going to kind of point down to the to the cute little mirror bits and then look up at fires on the cart and be like, 
have you seen these? They are amazing. I really want to pet one. Do you think one would let me pet it? Mm, you can always uh, have a try, I... but they bite if you get too close. Oh. Okay. I'll I'll make me an animal handling check, here. Seed. Okay. <laughs> 15. With a 15, you hold out your hand and there, one of the mere mere rabbits, one of the younger ones, looks around and does a little snuffly thing uh, and kind of moves in closer and you can see it sort of veering to avoid the other members of your party, but it does come to you. It, it's fascinated by your scent, something about it. Could Faisa, interesting. could Faisa give her a little bit of food? Like, just tap her on the shoulder and just pass her a little bit of food to try and feed to their mirror. Absolutely. Got a bunch of stuff down her top, haven't okay, she? Already. Take, take the food and then very gently just, just hold it out. <laughs> and then runs off. <laughs> that was superb. That was superb. <laughs> This hero, we okay. need to name it so it comes back consistently. <laughs> this hero, this Chekhov's were rabbit, or whatever it's called. <laughs> Chekhov's were rabbit. Yeah, that's exactly what that was. Mere rabbit, mere rabbit. Sorry. <laughs> mere ribbit. Mere ribbit. Whatever. Yeah, come on, let's get it right. <laughs> no, whatever. Back of the cart. Don't even care. Like, walking, walking. <laughs> uh, Six Smith would really like just to, because it's always worth having extra rations on hand. Six Smith would really like to pick it up immediately afterwards and swiftly slaughter it just qu quickly and quietly and then hang it off the edge of the make the, me but, a but but i'd like to just know if if these things do attack if like if they're if they're like rabbits and you can just kill one of them and they'd all just only one way to find out they, make me they are oh, harmless six smith they are harmless yeah but maybe the people that have just tried to feed it and 17. be nice to it aren't 17 the mere ribbit rolls a 23 and as you reach down, it just skitters between your hands too quick for you and runs away. I just wanted to pet it, you know, but uh, I don't know. Animals don't usually like me. And he just to cover up, not that he minds other people thinking he's slaughtering something cute, ugly. What's the difference? Um, but uh... a, a night in a bedchamber, that's the difference. <laughs> Phases, phases, not impressed. I don't get that. She's going to muster something under her breath and the word karma is going to come out. <laughs> But he just wolf, he just sort of plays it off like he was trying to pet it and it ran away. I know. Rather no than more. looking he'd rather not look like he failed at trying to You get it next time. Oh, so it. I don't think you're gonna get the best tea next time, mate. Just saying. I think that's that bit like that bit from uh, Aladdin where Jafar goes to do something, the camera goes black behind him and he looks evil and then it pans back and he's being perfectly normal. Just for a second. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> there's nothing wrong. I mean, it's the, it's the circle of life, you know. It's, it's, uh, why, why would we think that... Why, I don't think... Has anyone confronted him on this, by the way, Six Smith? Because if I mean, nobody I'm does, saying, then he'll probably just let it go. Did we see you... So is the idea that... Do we have to, like, roll an insight check to have sure, seen Sure, roll him, me an insight or... check. Let's see cool. anyone who wants to see if their character would have noticed his intent. I'm going to set the DC at a 10, as I'm assuming he wasn't being that subtle about it. I only got a six. <laughs> I got a six as well. With Ooh. a passive insight of 16, does that... Octavius definitely knows. Octavius him. always knows. Let's just let's just assume that he knows by default. Yeah. <laughs> Phaser and Seed were so busy um, oaring over the cutes. Too, too cute to notice. The murderous soldier. <laughs> I, I'll I'm get just... it next time, he yeah, says you'll to Octavius. Get it next under time, his breath. Sickness. You'll get yeah, it next thanks, time. Octavius. No cheers, cheers. Meets the luxury that sometimes we can't afford. Exactly, exactly. And sometimes we will not be able to avoid it. So, uh, as if you continue your journey, mm -hmm. okay. So people load back up on the cart. You carry on moving. Uh, can someone make me a survival check for the rest of the day's travel, please? Um, would you I'll like give to it be a go. me? Oh, okay, yes. I don't, I don't mind. It could be anyone. Um, I don't mind. Uh, survival. Are these alphabetical? Yes, they are. Twelve. Twelve. So with a twelve. Just roll me a d10, please. Got a four. Four, 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 four. The uh, low-lying mist returns, which slows down your journey, and it sort of descends into 
the ravine and you don't quite make as much progress as you'd have hoped. You don't have any encounters or, or come across anything other than a few more of the natives uh, creatures of this uh, ravine but it gets to sort of the point where it's early evening, the light is starting to close and you feel like it's probably around time to either make camp or push on through the night. Can we see what's around us? Is there any like caves or shelter or anything? Make me a uh, perception check, please, okay. with disadvantage because of the weather conditions. Oh, okay. Right, the first one was a 16. Oh, the next one was a 6, so guess which one? Yeah. With a 6, you look around. The ravine is. Um, it's not really, although the, the kind of the cliff faces are kind of yellow, it looks like sandstone. What's strange is it's not quite weathering like sandstone that is very porous and would erode very easily. It's, there are kind of boulders falling off, but it doesn't seem that it's forming any caves. Brother, your outfit. Here, you could go up against the wall and be invisible. See, there's a thing for everything, so it's all good. We should probably stop soon. I'm sure we can use some of these rocks as windbreaks and set up camp. Thank you, Octavius. It's very wise. Okay, so are we choosing to set up a camp? Yeah, yeah. That yes. seems sensible, doesn't I it? Think, I think Let, that's let's that's do some skill that. checks then. Uh, what would everyone like to contribute to the camp to see how safe this camp is tonight? Oh, you already know what I'm going to contribute, so just leave me till the end. <laughs> 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 that guy at camping. <laughs> uh, it, uh, so guess... right at the start, I would like to cast. Um, is fairy fairy fire is a light, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah, because I'd I'd like to cast fairy fire on three members of the camp in order to give us light while we work. <gasps> they will spectrally glow through the mists. So now everyone has a point of reference to at least three people. Who are you lighting up? I'm lighting. Ripper. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Six Smith and Seed. Uh, thank you, Octavius. You can decide which pose I will stand in for the duration of fairy fire so that you can all see me. What would you like? It's only uh, a 10 foot the radius, fetal so position. I expect you to do something, Ripper. All right, disco dancing it is then. <laughs> oh, what a waste. <laughs> oh dear. Doc, can you do a, mm. some sort of dance that points the light in my direction, please? Maybe more of the Macarena or something like that? I'd okay, like thank to you. That's perfect. have a look around to see if there's um, like smaller rocks or stuff that I can start piling up or um, other bits to make to make like a proper camp. Maybe bits of dead wood for the fire. Okay, make that's me an investigation check with disadvantage due to the weather. Also due to the dancing. Oh, man. Rolled so well. Okay, so the second one. <laughs> a 19 and a 1. So three in total. Three. Uh, yeah, you find some small rocks. There's nothing... You don't happen to find something that would be, you know, a plot device to build a camp with, but you find some small debris and broken twigs. There's some pebbles. Um, um, I guess we could make a, an image of the camp out of these so that we could <laughs> you know like when you're doing the planning um, and i'll sit and do yeah. that yeah. it might go nicely with your little figurines phaser uh that's a bit disrespectful they're holy anyway carrying on um <laughs> I, did, I was not aware of this you poured tea on that. them i mean no 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 mm -hmm. you're, you're, it's very, the craftsmanship was very good you know back where we come from it's it's a, a very a mark of uh, high regard having that level of uh, of quality okay thank you very much um uh, I'd like to see if I can pull. I don't know what's happening with the dancing. What's going is, on? Is Fairy Fire still on? It yes. lasts one minute. Oh, God. So. Oh, Josh. Okay. Oh, anyway, um, <sighs> I'd, I'd like to see if any of those. You said that there's there were there were some small boulders and stuff that had fallen down. I'd wonder if perhaps we can move some of those closer to create a sort of camp at all. I would say you could find see. big boulders quite oh, easily. Right. Oh, I see. Um, Make me a strength check. Ah, see, this is the wrong them. thing see, to Ripper, suggest. Ripper, why can you not help our what? artificer? What? Listen, mate, you asked me to be fair if I direct everyone no, of what I to go do. I asked you to help no. the camp. 
You am I not helping by oh. spreading light around? That's exactly what Six Smith asked me to do. I am merely doing what you all asked me to do. Also, I never got a chance for a full workout this morning. This is going to be help my cardio. You are never getting okay. very far again. Okay, I got uh, uh, I got a six, <laughs> so I'm not moving nothing. <laughs> well, think. you go up and you uh, start to push this giant boulder, uh, certainly giant compared to your tiny stature, <laughs> and it doesn't move at all. Okay. I wonder if anybody who's feeling particularly energetic and wants a, a little bit of a workout might want to try a little bit of, um, I don't know, a bit of an arm and leg day together and maybe help me move this. Oh, you want to add, do you? Yes, please. All right, I'll come over. <laughs> Thank you. Whoop. Uh, what have I got to do? I'm so <laughs> tempted to work out in itself. It would be lovely if we could, uh, I was trying to make a little bit of shelter. We're but, about to have a long but, you know, rest, maybe. So. Maybe up against the uh, <laughs> up against the the cart, um, so that we can perhaps build a fire and but feel a bit more protected. Yeah, all right, I'll shove rock. Uh, Make me a strength check. Yes, that's going to be a dirty twenty. <laughs> it doesn't go easily. It is still a large boulder, but with a little bit of grunting, you do manage to push this boulder leeward towards the wall, and it creates a little bit of a windbreak. Great. Um, Welcome. All right. Back to it. <laughs> and the fairy fire fades. Okay. Great. Um, uh, I would like to... I've got prestigitation again, so that means I can... Can I make something light up? Shower sparks? Nope. Uh, I can you light really... or snuff a candle or a torch or a small campfire. Um, yes. So I might do that if that's all right. Um, have we got any t anything to make a campfire out of? Yes. Have you got anything in your supplies? I don't know. Let me uh, let me do my usual. And Sixsmith uh, sh shrugs off his armor. Uh, you know he knows he thinks no one's watching, but he glistens again in the waning light. Um, and he uh, scales the, attempts to scale the rock in order to get uh, to to a higher point, maybe above uh, the the. Uh, it's where maybe where he can gather some sticks from. Awesome. Some, some so some you're going to try and attempt to climb like 50 foot up a sheer ravine? Ah! Uh... <laughs> do, no. do it, do it, do it, do it, do <laughs> it. Can that be done in a minute with the furry fire? It would, it would be... Oh, we're about to take a long I rest. A he, he might as well. I... He might as well give it a go. The thing is, he's he, he would. It would look glorious. It would be every. It would be the Bollywood that that he, he, in his head he, he aspires to. Surge. It's still early evening, isn't it? Yes. So we, yeah. It, it is still early evening, so we can still see what we're doing. Just about, can we? Well, the low mist that miss? has fallen has made it. That's what's making it hard to see. Right. Okay. So I just spent five minutes dancing to try and be a spotlight for you. Maybe he you can, can climb. Maybe there's some bits and pieces sort of part way up the ravine that he can climb up to, and maybe pull the dry kindling from inside, like sort of. Make me uh, an athletics check to see how well you can climb this fairly sheer ravine. Okay, fifteen. So with fifteen, you make it about. Oh, so it would be a single round. So yeah, you make it about. Uh, 15, 17 feet up, and you're still just okay. holding onto rock. So uh, I'd like to look around and see if there are any... I, I sort of imagine that there'll be, you know, birds' nests and other things, or leftover nests, bits of kindling and dry sort of okay. um, bits. Make me an investigation moss, check. Perhaps. Oh, it's a 19. So with the 19, you have a look around. Uh, the bit you're on is still pretty sheer. You can see maybe about another 18 feet up that there looks to be a little bit more of a shelf where something has broken up. You have a feeling it'll take you two more rounds of climbing to get there. Okay. Um, in that case, I, I don't mind staggering this in between other people's if, you wanna, if someone else wants to, to have a crack at the camp. Um, I can. I can. I can use my magical tinkering to imbue a tiny non-magical object, perhaps one of the stones which Lap has picked up, with a, a five-foot radius of light. If that will help disperse any. You're welcome. 
So thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to say that's going to take yeah. you a couple of minutes to sit and sort of tinker with and play okay. with. Okay, okay. Well, so we're about that. six seconds into Six Smith climbing. So if there's anything else anyone would like to do that's sort of in a six seconds time limit. Don't oh. dance, Ryan. Don't waste <laughs> it. <laughs> I'll be I'll be in the car getting dinner ready as I did last time. Ready for okay. that wonderful story. So Six Smith, make me another athletics check, please. Al indeed. She's got to be fifteen to oh! keep climbing. So Nat twenty, so plus four, twenty-four. Okay, twenty-four. Yeah, you manage to get up easily up the next fifteen feet, and you sense you're probably nice. only five feet away from this ledge that you had just seen. Uh, if anyone else likes to do anything in the next six seconds. I'll be calming the mule down. Okay. Um, I wanted to walk like a wide patrol around the camp, which is going to take more time. So. Okay, but you can certainly start that patrol. Um, you would like to make me a perception check at disadvantage because it's very misty where you are. Please see. Mm, can I give her? Oh no, I haven't made it yet. I was going to give no. her a little thing, but yeah. Okay. And then six minutes with your last <clears throat> athletics check, please. Eighteen. Yeah, pretty easily you manage to climb up the last bit. And it is a bit like that scene in Bahubali where he climbs up the waterfall, just going up this sheer cliff face. <laughs> and you do the thing where you jump over sideways <laughs> yeah. onto the ledge. And Defy because of the gravity, mist, of which has sort of drenched you, your hair does that. And the uh -huh. water just flies off in droplets. Um, and you kind of look at the screen. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's pretty damn cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At the top, we'd like to make me another investigation check to see what you can find. Okay. Oh, listen, it's not going to go well from this point onwards, but I've got a 19, so I'm using up all of this to build this camp. Let's hope that we don't have to fight anyone at the end of this, because I'll have used well, up my good roles. let's hope we do. <laughs> you, uh, as you get to the top, yes, you find where this large boulder has kind of broken off and formed a little bit of a plateau. It's not very big. It's probably only about four feet deep. But in there, you do find uh, the remains of a nest, uh, there's nothing in it at the moment. It looks long abandoned, but it is it's pretty damp, but it could be quite quickly dried out. It's about you know, that wide and fairly deep, and it's made of dried grasses, bits of twigs. You feel that would be enough to get a campfire going, mm. at least. Cool. Hi, um, my magical tinkering, it says, takes one action, by the way. Is that all right? So, oh, yeah, in that case, yeah, that's fine. Cool. That would be activated Great. by now. Brilliant. Fabulous. Um, have you, how far away is Seed? <laughs> she come far away? Uh, I'll give it to her before then. She's oh, yeah, probably I mean, 30 probably... feet in six seconds. Fair play. Well, then, no. It's all right. I was going to pass it to somebody to use. But I'll just keep it central. Okay. How long, how long does the tinkering work? Uh, it, I can affect a maximum of three objects at a time, but there does... doesn't seem to be any limit on it. It's just about it's a five-foot radius of light in this instance. Might be, might be handy for whoever takes watch. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it's like the light spell, so it will last the exact same amount of time as the light spell. Um, so, Sixsmith, how are you getting down? Mm. I shout, I don't suppose anyone has Featherfall? And then I, uh, I, I... Yes, jump, I... I'll catch you. <laughs> 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 uh... um, no, I, I probably try and sort of bound down like a, like one of those goats that can, like, can perch on the on a one millimeter of, of rock or something in order to lick salt. holding the the nest of course uh yes. well in that under, case gripped it under you're my trying arm. to bounce down make me an acrobatics check okay i shall indeed oh it's not terrible not brilliant it's 13. okay so yeah you've managed to make the first jump and you do the thing where you kind of sway a little bit rocks crumble and uh you know in uncharted where something starts to give but you manage to catch yourself it's exactly that. <laughs> um, would you like to make another acrobatics check? Or athletics if you'd like to climb? Uh, well, I've got three on my acrobatics. It's not too late, is it? <laughs> As you start to fall, so you've moved, uh, yeah, I'd say you take 20, so you're about 30 feet down. So, it's uh, one, two, three, so maybe 10 feet. You take eight points of bludgeoning damage as you suddenly you go to make the next jump, and as you do, uh, small stones under your feet just make you slip and you fall straight down 
onto your back holding the nest but hurt hard hard enough to knock the wind out of you um it still looks quite cool i mean not many pe- other people could fall from that height and <laughs> not be you know completely obliterated mm-hmm. but that's gonna sting okay, okay i quickly Smith? yeah yeah i won't lie to you it was a bit hard of a fall um but uh but Can i have the kindling oh no I, you're very kind I, I i appreciate it and i and i just um as an action, I healing hand myself as I dust myself off and rub my leg to, I think I'm okay, but Octavius is very kind of you. And I restore two hit points. Lovely. Uh, then we come to Seed doing her patrol. What was your perception? Check? So I've got a 17 uh, and Seed is specifically looking for any signs of more wild animals around the camp, signs of obviously other people being around and also specifically things that Seed thinks are edible for their fellow campmates. Okay. Uh, with a 17, you... Yeah, you find uh, sort of remains of some of the mirror bits. So you find some, some kind of small bits of fluff that have been caught on rocks, the odd feather. You do find some... Dry, well, not dry, but kind of long grasses that um, we would say look a little bit like sword grass or something. So they look very tough and fibrous sounds delicious uh and you also find some tiny purple flowers sort of resembling dandelions okay so seed is going to take out their dagger and cut off a clump of the grass pick a few of the flowers and kind of make a little kind of handful of vegetation uh and then keep patrolling okay um are you looking for anything else in your patrol? Uh, just literally finishing the loop until they're sure they've kind of done the circuit. Um, yeah, I'd say by this time, because obviously you sort of got to do, it's just a, a D around the camp because there's the wall blocking it. It doesn't take you too long. You don't really find anything else in the mist. You're wary of walking too far off because it is very hard to see. Okay, at which point, uh, basically, they'll come back into kind of the, the actual camp area itself uh, and basically hold out their handfuls of vegetation and say, Hello, fellow humanoids. I have brought you a delicious dinner. <laughs> uh, thank you, Seed. Bring it over here, and I'll I'll incorporate it with the. Uh, oh, you wait, know. Wait, 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 wait. One second. Uh, can I just take a look at the purple flowers, please, with my herbalism kit to see? Of course, you may make me a herbalism okay, check, please. Safe. Um, that is plus. It'd be wisdom, wouldn't it, for me? And proficiency. Uh, so that is a 23. These are called Dinia's Folly, and they are definitely poisonous. Not enough to kill anyone, uh, but they will bring out some rather large nasty rashes and spots if people eat them and make you very itchy for days. Thank you, Seed. This was very helpful, and I take it slightly away from camp, and I ritual cast Purify Food and Water on him. And then I bring them okay. back and give them to Ripper. Just a little garnish on the top of every <coughs> everyone's pack. Lovely. Okay. Uh, and yeah, they it imparts a... I mean, the grass is... It's like kale in terms of, you know, just how long you have to cook kale before it doesn't just taste like rope. Uh, just I'm the, still the not certain it's bit. ever edible. You know, like oh. I've cooked it a variety of different ways. No, you can eat it. I think that's different to it being edible, though. It's fine when you it know? goes crispy. You yeah. can deal with it. Uh, but th- no, I have had people cook it where it is actually delicious. But those people are wizards and, you know, deserve or all druids. the praise. Yeah. Uh, not <laughs> druids. Uh, so, yeah, the, the grass itself is nutritious is probably the nicest thing we could say about it. A sort of a slightly salty taste. Um, quite, quite reminiscent of kind of samphire but closer in fiber to just really undercooked kale and the Danaeus folly on top has this slight um kind of parsimon flavor it's interesting definitely interesting not necessarily the most present thing but interesting i'm going to assume that i've taken the kindling from uh six myth and yeah so by this point you've you've made (laughs) camp you are sat around the camp is there anything you would like to do fire food last time we were sat here we had a story um i'd love another 
Oh and yeah, Sixsmith yeah. gets his his maps and his other things out, and I'm just going to do a bit of work at the same time. I hope you don't mind. I'll be listening though. Octavius, I'll take second watch and goes to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, for those uh, who do who are still paying attention, um, here's all your food. By the way, I think Octavius isn't eating this because he's just gone straight to sleep. Um, so... I'll I'll save it for him. Don't worry, and I take it aside and make sure he can have it in the morning. Yeah, of course. I can I can tell another story. Uh same rules as last time. Any free words? Three of us. Off we go. Oh, could could we have mere ribbits in it this time, please? Thank you. Of course you can. Mere ribbits. I'd like the word slaughter in there. <laughs> Alright, slaughter. Uh one more. Um sand. Right, sand, lovely. All right, uh, in a far off land, in a plane that we've never seen before or been to, hopefully, there were these grand, what are they called, mere rabbits? Mere ribbits, right? These grand mere ribbits. And they used to ride, right, other mere ribbits into battle, right? These guys, they were called the Sand Squad, right? Do you want to know why they were called the Sand Squad? Because they would send you to see the Sandman, right? They were slaughterers. Slaughterers, I wouldn't believe, right? Crack team of mere ribbit killers, yeah? And so one day... They wait, wait, wait. S- they'd ride them or they'd kill them? Both. I don't, oh, Both. okay. It was were ribbits riding other were ribbits Yeah, you got it. Killing to other kill were-ribbits. other were ribbits right. Yeah, ah, of course. Civil war. Oh, I of like course. this story. Okay, and, it's cra- and it's crazy, right? And they were, they, and you know, the Sand Squad, because they're into the Sandman, they were slaughterers. They were madness, right? They were, they were just unbelievably good at what they do, right? Crack team. And one day they got sent on the secret mission and they were going through the forest and they saw something in the distance. So all of them, you know, made a perception check, let's say. And what they saw standing up against them was identical versions of themselves. And that's where we're going to leave that story. I mean, I don't, I I mean to be rude, but um, surely they all look the same anyway. And and also... That's slightly racist. Is it it speciesist? But surely you have to be, and I'm not um, casting aspersions, but you have to be sentient, don't you, to recognize yourself in something else. Such Didn't Didn't you say you were looking at some maps or something? Ah, yes, yes. Carry on with the story. Yes, yes. No, I, c- I couldn't sleep through that story, but these, these, they, these, they rode the Miribits. They were what? Two inches tall? Well, first of all, if you don't get enough sleep, you're not going to have to take a second watch properly, right? So. Oh, it was only a small uh, question. Yes, of course. I'm I mean, uh, sleep. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty tired. I think I might, I think I might go to sleep as well after I've had that, you know. Good luck on Reza, what? I saw I'll you making you some notes. Did you have some feedback for the story? For maybe something to improve for next time? Uh, I, no, I'll, I'll wait for the end. I don't like to presume with the story. I'm assuming Rip is running to the tents to sleep, or tents to the uh, uh, camp to sleep, or is it? Will he finish? As as Ripper said, that's where we'll leave the story for today. Maybe next time we'll pick up with the Sand Squad. Okay. Yeah, I'd, maybe next time I'd like a different story. I hope that's okay. <laughs> Sand stories don't have to finish sequentially stories take a long time to come to fruition sometimes you might start three four five stories at a time and then you have to try and remember what you told to them to finish them later on that's certainly true for me and so you all <laughs> head to camp that night you take your various watches and the night passes fairly easily you wake up feeling refreshed uh, and you start your journey again heading through the canyon westwards as uh, it gets to around mid-morning the mist burns off and you can see a little bit further and then as you're walking can you all just make me perception checks please seven eleven twenty three eleven sixteen okay so uh then it would be octavius sees some movement on the ridges it just shadows moving and as you're looking up the mist sort of clears and in front of you you see seven what look like legionnaires uh they're very small 
legionnaires with green faces, long pointed ears, and just behind them, sat on a uh, large dog-like creature, is another goblin who's got a looks like a legionnaire's breastplate. Uh, so it's got the riveted metal across. He's got bare sleeves, and you can all see he's got a tattoo on his right arm, uh, which has uh, got the initials of the legion, and underneath it's got a picture of a hydra. The tattoo would once have been silver, but actually it looks like it's bleeding. It's bleeding quite uh, like a magical effect that the tattoo has started bleeding. Ambush. The to arms. Uh, he's got a large hat and these sort of dreadlocks as he looks at you and goes well 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 what do we got here and that's where we're going to break <laughs> see you all soon Thank
I'm in. Hello. Hey. And we're back. Uh, oh. With that, I would like you all to roll initiative, please. Oh, I wanted to have a chance to chat to these guys first. <laughs> Maybe you will. Mm. Maybe you will. Oh. So just hold your numbers for a moment. No problem. And I'll call them out once you've all rolled. Okay, marvellous. Uh, anyone over 20? 26. I, I have a 20. Ow. I have a 20. Who's got better decks, Octavius or uh, Ripper? Plus two. Plus four. So luck. Octavius. Ripper. 20 to 15. 17. Mutage door. Holding space bar in D&D uh, &D Beyond. Um, 18. Okay. Steve, was that 16? 17. 17, okay, sorry. So that is that, then that. Phaser, how are you doing? Uh, 14. 14. Uh, okay. And we're there. Good. So with that, you see this... Uh, goblin with this bleeding tattoo on his right arm, this chest plate, uh, quite well muscled, this almost kind of tricorn hat and these long um, kind of dreadlocks on him saying, well, well, well. And it comes to lack first. What would you like to do? How far away are they? Well, I can show you exactly if you would like to uh, refresh your screen on Foundry. I had you in a rough order. Please tell me where you would like to move. I was waiting for it to reload. <clears throat> That's okay. Mm -hmm. What do we know about oh, goblins um, in this in this land? They are just another people. Legion? Okay. What about as far their... as you're concerned? Do the we legion, know much about their uh, army might be able to tell you or... more. Okay. Yeah, you would know absolutely nothing. Uh, Octavius would have detailed information. Uh, he would be, if he's willing to share that when it gets to his turn, as we're in initiative order, he can certainly do so. Okay. Uh, I would say Seed has probably at least seen legionnaires uh, in her in their journey south, sorry. But the rest of you, you may have seen some kind of going past you on roads, but in terms of detailed knowledge, no, they're, they're wearing army uniforms, certainly. Uh, so is there anyone would like to move their starting position? I'm not loaded up yet. I'm not loaded up yet either, sorry. Okay. Mm. Out of the seven, is so is this, this chap on the dog, is he the seventh? Or is he there's seven legionnaires plus him? Let's do a check. Uh, seven plus him. Plus him, thank you. Plus, as uh, Octavius looks up, he now sees three figures 
at the top, about uh, 50 feet up. I did. I've I've loaded in now. Uh, I w would like to be a little bit further back next to the mule, please. Okay. Thank you. I'd probably be further forward, either in front of or next to Lack currently. Okay, I can put you in. Well, I'll put you there, so you're just out of combat range. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. I'm good where I am. Still loading. Sorry. I'm fine where I am. Okay, thank you, Seed. I might refresh my screen. It's it's been sat ninety percent for a little bit. It's still okay. Mm -hmm. So these tokens. And so where it's. They, re they remind yes. me of um, the tokens we had. I'm sure they're the ones that we had in in real life for your games, Dan, when we were playing 4. Is that why? Like that. Oh, wait, no, maybe it's maybe I'm seeing it because it was one of Bradley's previous characters in another game we were playing. Did you retrofit these tokens, Brad? What was this, sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah, this, that... yeah, this uh, was... Yeah. Um... yeah, something I adapted, yeah. I can barely see it. I think it's the one that I adapted. Yeah, the, yes, the, the eyes look sentiment. the same. Okay, uh, Phaser. I'm happy with. Oh, I'm happy. Okay, so Phaser, you are. I I'll just describe it because I don't. I don't want it to drag Thank on. You. They, you are at just behind the cart, uh, off to the right. You are uh, kind of just by a small rock that is probably mm. about half your size. So you're a little bit hidden and obscured. You are five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five feet away from any of the enemies and the entire party is in front of you at the moment you're sort of semi hidden by the cart and this rock thank you so you're in a pretty good position lack as you can see uh, it is your turn what would you like to do i am going to hold because i don't know what's going on i'm going to hold to either um to attack someone if given the word by octavius okay uh, and then we move to Octavius, it is your turn. Deserters, we should either kill them all or run. And I will summon, that was my bonus action, I suppose. Um, and then yeah. I will summon my wildfire, wildfire spirit um, directly to the south of me on the bridge. And I would just say, bird, this. do something for once. Okay. Okay. Ah! Uh, Directly to the south of you. Uh, on the ridge, yes. Yeah, on so the ridge. Bottom of the map. About there ish. Uh, yep, if you refresh, perfect. it should appear. Uh, so you summon it, and it ha has it got a range on the summon? Because as I said, that is uh, it's about 50 feet up, and at that angle, it's probably about 75 feet. Give me a second, and I will find out. That's my last kid. It just says as, a, as an action. Absolutely fine, then. I'll, I'll allow it. Uh, and so that's your action to summon it yes um and then i the will bonus action you have movement left i have movement left so i'll move 10 feet south and, uh, and that will end my go so 10 feet south towards the wall of the ravine okay marvelous that brings it to ripper that is your turn oh, hang on i i held until being told about tabius oh, okay yes said attack them um am i only allowed to hold an action so i can only throw my spear is that correct or yes. can i okay so i should throw my spear at um the one nearest to me up north of the of the group of three okay so yes there's a kind of a large puddle standing in front of you one just at an angle to the northwest you throw your sphere make an attack roll please ah, so i've rolled a 17 and i think i've got plus eight on my attack that definitely hits so... uh roll damage mm-hmm it's thrown, so it does a different amount than if I... Yes, it's 1d6, because I've got these two hands. So well, that's 10 points of damage. So as you... And then the spear comes uh, uh, flying anyway. back into my hand. It flies through it, and in fact it just impales the first uh, goblin that goes straight through their armor and as it kind of flies in you see that although it wasn't the best spear throw you've ever done the armor doesn't seem to be that good quality and has just buckled inwards under the pressure as it impales it and completely obliterates the first uh, goblin before yes pinging back and appearing in your it comes hands. back i do like 
I catch it and do like a spin in the sand with my leg out and come back up again. Marvellous. Uh, Ripper, we come to you. You know what they say, in for a penny, two for a pound. And he's going to move <laughs> into that square below the one that just got murderized. Okay. Uh, five, 10, 15, 20. So he's engaged with two of them. Yeah. Lovely. And the one that's uh, directly to the west of me, in front of me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit him with the stick. Make an attack roll, please. Of course I will. That will be a 17. That hits. I would like to roll damage, please. Sure. That is going to be seven points of damage. Seven points of damage. Uh, so as you run up and you wield the stick and just whack it in the head, the goblin uh, helmet's not very well fitted. It's quite loose and it kind of rattles and you see it go over and it's in quite a lot of pain, uh, but it hasn't yet fallen. Lovely. Then two for a pound, two for a pound. Yeah, that's going to be uh, 24. 24. And uh, six points of damage. So as you spin again and you whack it with the other end of the pole, as it went down with its head rattling, you pulled it under and lift it back up and it knocks it flying back, smashes its head into a rock. And it seems for the moment to be knocked unconscious. So I'm going to put Uh, that there and I'm going to do that. There we go. And that's my turn. Thank you very much. Marvellous. Six. Six method is your turn. So there's a, a bonus six yells, um, archers on the ridge and points to the archers. Um, and then he's going to move to the lone um, goblin at the, to the south, um, probably nestle himself um, just above it. Um, and he, he moves towards it with his hand on his sword still sheathed, but then brings it out like a samurai in one swift movement to try and attack the the goblin as he okay. unsheaths his sword. Ghost of Tsushima this, let's make an attack roll. <laughs> I shall, I shall. Oh, well, well that's okay. Um, I got a two. So as you bring your sword out, this one is actually, uh, as you see, just by a rock, and you bring your sword and it moves to, and your sword clangs off the rock as it resets itself and recovers. Um, well, that's my go. Okay, Seed, it is your turn. Okay, so hearing the cry about the archers on the ridge, Seed is going to pull their bow back and aim up at the archers. This is assuming that that's fair in terms of aim and vision. If I aim at one I would end. say, yes, they're, they're aiming down. I am going to say that they've got three quarters cover from this height. Uh, so that's essentially going to add a few more marks to their AC. Okay. I uh, just, sorry, I'm just double checking a rule. Uh, I believe my ranged weapon ignores three quarters cover because of sharpshooter. You have sharpshooter? Yes, you completely ignore that then, yes. Cool. Quality. Uh, so, yes, uh, basically C is going to let an arrow fly up over the ridge go for it uh and that's a cheeky 22 it is very cheeky for uh eight points of damage so as you see these archers leaning back pulling their bowstrings back seed looks up and releases an arrow and it flies and just pings one in the shoulder you see its bow uh string just be let go and it kind of shakes its hand as it's just been hit and you see an arrow tumbling down into the ravine that would otherwise have been loosed uh anything else you'd like to do and then as a bonus action uh seed seeing that six myth has just run into the fray decides to drum you in with bardic inspiration so uh they strike up a marching beat as they see you go forward and then just get faster and faster and faster and it's like they're almost trying to cheer you on marvelous uh, yeah and that's me so what you're that do for me, by the way just oh so sorry know. good point that's okay um, it's only me that doesn't really know this stuff everyone else remembers <laughs> i forget uh, no, it's my fault for not saying. Uh, so basically, you get an inspiration dice, which is 1d6. Oh, uh, for 10 minutes, you can add it to one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. It oh, can lovely. be added after seeing the roll, but before you know the outcome. 
Okay, perfect. Okay. Very nice. Uh, so, see, that is your turn. Phaser, you are up. You are muted. Doz. <laughs> yeah. Um, I uh, have... Uh, I'd like to cast a spell, please. Um, of course. I'd like to... And this is on Celia in the cart. I'd like to... I can uh, cast Sanctuary, which is... Um, a, a, a bonus action actually so i've got an action as well as a bonus action don't i um it needs a small silver mirror noob alert does that can i can i i would assume that you would probably have a small silver mirror on you Thank what's you the casting much. time on sanctuary does it say one bonus action it says one bonus action yeah, yeah. that's absolutely fine then. So, cool uh and it lasts for one minute uh okay. but i ward a creature within range against attack until the spell ends any creature who targets the warded creature with an attack or a harmful spell must first make a wisdom saving throw uh, and on a failed save, they must choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. And the spell doesn't protect the ward creature from area effects, such as the explosion of a fireball. Fantastic. So yeah. as uh, the fray breaks out, Phaser instantly turns and getting her arcane tools out, she creates this effect and then uh, almost kind of like a shield in Star Trek or something, just as a glow of energy surrounds uh, just over Celia's body. Is there anything you'd like to do as a main action? You uh, cannot, cut, well, you can cast a cantrip. Uh, or okay, you can cool. do something else. Um, I'd, I'd like to fire my crossbow at somebody, if that's all right. Absolutely um, fine. Great. So I, I need to, I think I, I, my foundry's still frozen, but um, uh, Sean very kindly sent me a screenshot of uh, mm -hmm. one point in the action, so it's not totally up to date, but it's roughly there. Um, if I can duck out from behind the rock that I'm behind, yes. um, and I'd like to fire to the closest Goblin. Okay, you can easily have that range. It's yeah. uh, just by Ripper, so make a shot, please. Thank you. So, uh, that's a nine plus a three hit. So, so that's not, uh, yeah, twelve. A twelve. As yeah. you uh, fire, this crossbow bolt shoots through the air, and it's. Uh, Ripper just moves out of the way as it flies past him, but the creature manages to pull its shield up and deflect it, and it does not penetrate. Damn it. Um, and then with the rest of my move, I will probably duck back behind my boulder. <laughs> Absolutely fine. <laughs> Next up, then, uh, the archers on top. One of them swearing a little bit, oh, bloody hell, I can't believe this bloody hit me, right, and pulls back this bow, uh, is going to take a shot, and he is going to fire at Seed. Uh, for a 23 to hit. Yeah. <laughs> and he is going to do four points of piercing damage as this arrow shoots down and almost in mirror image of your shot takes you in the shoulder uh, and you feel it pierce under your armor. The second arm uh, archer who is also on the southern ridge is going to look up, see six smith uh, having just clanged sees that his sword is up and he is open and he is going to release his arrow there with a natural 20 uh, and so he's going to do brother no 10 points of piercing damage as uh, this arrow crashes into the, your upper thigh and it's that's gonna sting in the morning that is certainly gonna sting as, in the morning as the arrow comes down there's like the camera pans to lat just looks looks at the camera six looks at the camera the arrow comes through they all look at the camera they look at the camera <laughs> and the arrow shoots into his leg and we, we all look at the camera and then like he pulls back Aah! people Always are looking like at the camera zooms, it's true. right digital yeah. zooms after like every look. heavy digital <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, the last archer on the northern ridge is going to look up and uh, it's going to see Ripper and going to take a shot at them. Uh, and this time his volu uh, voluminous kind of glittering purple cape is flying around him as he dodges and the arrow just shoots and goes right where the cape was and skitters mm. off the earth and absolutely misses him. Uh, next up the uh, goblin right at the back with the most visible tattoo. Uh, shouts, right, well, I guess this is happening then. Let's have them, boys! And uh, he is going to use some movement to come 
forward uh, I to, <laughs> to there. I'm going to use all the movement of the wall to just ride in behind so he's a stride ripper and as he does he pulls a long spear and he just pushes it towards ripper's back he is flanking so he gets advantage on his roll um, and that is going to be a 19 to hit that will hit okay and that is going to do seven points of piercing damage as this large pillum just gets pushed as you dodge out of the arrow skittering sadly that the drawbacks of being bare chested is this uh, spear just pushes into the back of your shoulder and you kind of see it pushing out of the front before it's just pulled back out again um, as his bonus action he's going to shout come on lads you can do this and you they suddenly look well, one of them at least looks very inspired by his actions. Uh, and then, I can't believe they all rolled one on their initiative. All three <laughs> of them. Unbelievable. Um, the bandits are going to take their turn. Firstly, this one's going to rush up and have an attack at Ripper. And he's going to absolutely whiff. It's not even going to get close as his spear pushes forwards. But... Ironically, as the other spear came forward and pushed you forwards, it meant the other one just went over your shoulder. Uh, better the wound you know. <laughs> the one directly in front of you is going to try, actually, and grapple you. He's a lot smaller than you, but he's going to make the attempt of just grabbing onto your leg. So could you make a contested strength check, please? Of course I can. You are looking at 21 to beat. He got a 19, which I was like, oh my god, that's incredible. So, uh, yeah, for a moment you feel the resistance as you've kind of got this spear through you and a goblin holding your head, uh, your leg, and this spear kind of going over you, and you sort of kick it off and get loose. Uh, the one directly in front of uh, Sixsmith is going to jump over the rocks and, again, bring a pillum down towards you and uh, absolutely miffs as uh, he kind of stabs it forwards and with kind of a casual disregard of the experienced soldier you just flick it to one side and it looks super cool the one directly to your south six is again going to have another roll towards you and he in fact just stabs the floor um, as you again as you deflect one you kind of backhand the other one away. And so you kind of do that thing we fl flatter your hand against a blade. It doesn't even hit. And he just spins and pirouettes. The last bandit is going to uh, jump over the rock and take an attack at you as well. Uh... <laughs> With a third time, you whack one, you <laughs> buff one, and then you lift your leg up in almost like a kick. And it just blocks the arm of the other one. <laughs> and then you just spin around on the surface and they all sort of fly back. And for a moment, it's very kung fu uh, as we get to the end of their time. It's really boring having all the enemies at once. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, oh, I just managed to defeat like four of them in a row. That was amazing. Yep. And now we have all the players in a row. And now all the players in a row. Uh, Lack, it is your turn. You are muted. muted. Naughty me. I was <laughs> double, double tabbed. Um, I would like to move up to above Ripper, and so okay. because I stay in contact with the guy, yes, the heavy guy, don't get, and then I'd like to stab the big guy in the face with a spear, if possible, please. Okay, make an attack roll, please. That's fourteen plus eight, twenty-two. You hit. Um, so that's one d eight. That's five plus six 11 points of damage to him okay is that piercing with your spear that is piercing with my spear yes okay. um and then i'd like to spend a key point and as the spear's in him i like barrel turn over the spear and kick the other two behind me i'll take a attack at each of them okay florio blows make your mm -hmm. attack rolls please Whew, 18 plus seven on one you hit and seven plus seven on the other one, 14. You just hit. Wow, this is exceptional work. Uh, on one of them, uh, six points of damage. And on the other one, haha, -ha, nine points of damage. Okay, so again, you uh, managed to stab over the wog that's got this 
goblin on it and it kind of just nicks his arm he doesn't look too bothered uh, but as you spin elegantly you send these kicks that again just knock the two that look like they're closing in on ripper just enough back that he can reset himself octavius it is your turn um, i'm gonna finish off by moving away back to where i started because i've got the mobile feet anyone i attack in melee can't take an attack of opportunity absolutely so you're going to end up back uh, just to the south or you were just to the uh, started, west of the horse yes, yes. yeah lovely. thank uh, you i believe fantastic uh ripper it is oh, sorry octavius your uh, turn um octavius would like to um cast healing word on six Smith. okay um so that will be plus uh, so five points of healing. As you reach out and this uh, kind of strange orange glow suffuses you and it feels warm. It's like the warmth of a fire as you walk in from a rainy day and you feel your spirit nourished as you regain five health. And then I would like to move up and engage the goblin uh, to the south of Sixsmith uh, so that okay. I'm only engaged with that one goblin. Okay, so you move right to the base of the wall to your southwest. Oh, oh, sorry, that's six. There we go. I knew that. <laughs> there we go. You move yep. directly west and engage with that single goblin. And then I would uh, attack once with my scimitar, please. Okay, make me an attack roll. Oh, that's cocked. It was a 20 when it was cocked. <laughs> no, it's cocked. <laughs> uh, that's a... 14 so 20 dirty 20 it hits yeah okay roll damage uh that's 10 points of slashing damage okay uh, as you rush up as this one has just been finished being knocked back by six myths cool little trio defense and you just slice at it and you manage to catch it uh, and it cuts a little bit of the leather straps holding the armor and it's kind of whole arm of armor falls off it's only kind of loose chain around there and as you see also it too has the bleeding uh sigil of the like second legion deserting scum um. And my uh, bird takes the dodge action because I didn't command it because I cast Healing Word. Absolutely fine. Uh, that is your turn? Yes. Ripper, you're up. And six, you're on deck. Uh, Ripper's going to stand after taking the spear and turn to this guy and go, Oh, it's been a long time since I had a good fight. And there was a fucking back. Bloody! Yes, come on. Is this against the guy in the wog? Yeah. Yes. Never, okay. Never seen you so happy, Ryan. If I'm honest. Oh. <laughs> it's because oh. of the preamble beforehand. If Is you that, was that a roll cool, for bonus? Well. Have... <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> yeah, roll for bonus. Right. So that is it's eleven points of damage straight out the bat. Yep. Then we have four, and like as Ripper steps up and the sort of the, the you see the the basically the gaping wound from the spear and something a sort of a very a radiant light emanates from that down his arm where he's holding the uh thingy and he is going to divine smite the enemy uh he will use both his spell slots to do so um because this is very new to him and so i get to roll 3d8 of extra damage. <laughs> uh, wait, how does that work? Does that not work with crits? The crits? Technically, well, Divine Smite you can declare after the roll, yeah. I believe. So, mm, I'd say, I'm going to say no, because... Yeah, because otherwise it's a little bit of an instigator with the way we do crits. Otherwise I'm just uh, like, well, I'm just going to cast it at a 6th level and instantly... Again, like... for people at home, we do automatic match damage, max damage on all dice, then you re-roll all dice. Do you know what, Right, we'll have a chat about that and see how that might work mechanically after today. Well, I, I want to say no, only because if somebody else Divine Smites us and we use that rule, it's going to just completely wipe us. So. Okay, fine. If you'd Ryan, like to knowing do... Johnny well there, uh, listeners, yeah. thank you, Ryan. Yeah. No problem. I'm future proofing we'll engage a all paladin of paladin order of like 20 paladins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go all on. right. So, first roll was an eight. Second roll was a seven. Third roll was an eight. So, that's basically, I basically rolled max damage anyway. So, uh, 23 points of damage plus the 11, 30 
five plus then the four and the three uh four e three points of damage you turn around wow. and you just lay into as you said like this massive sweeping blow this radiant light hits you and it uh you just whack the warg on the head so it kind of flips him forward onto the ground and he's kind of lying in the ground stunned as you just Is bring it down uh, and he he's lying on the ground going oh i didn't mean for this to happen things are not going well does what does that what does that mean he's still talking fine all right i then as a because i still have a bonus action but uh I, for my bonus action, I want to say, nobody touch this one. This one's mine. Okay, that is your turn it's then. Six very minutes. aggressive, Ripper. Bit um, bit alpha, I guess. <laughs> Maybe channeling a different character from a different game. Uh, um, Six Smith, you are surrounded by four foes. So I, uh, from where I am, I. I go, um, I admire your spirit as a bonus action, but, and then to, to Ripper, and then to the, uh, to the downed, um, goblin, uh, leader, excuse me, I, um, I say, uh, call your men off and we'll spare your life. And I do that as a bonus action. Um, and as an action, I, can I ready, um, an action. If you're going to try and attempt to pers persuade them to stand down, I'm going to get you to use a persuasion check as yep. your action. Okay. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Okay, um, make me a persuasion check. And that is 16. Okay. Uh, oh, can I... When can I add my plus six? Should I have done it before I saw the number on my dice? I'm still getting the hang of this inspiration. This doesn't resolve until his turn. So okay. So you can use it now if you wish to. Um, yeah, I will, because I think this is the time to just... just to. This is the time to do it, I think. So I'll add three onto okay. that. So that's 16 plus okay. three. So 19 for the persuasion yeah. roll. Okay, thank you. Uh, so that's your action. And you said it was your bonus to talk to him in the first bit before you made persuasion. So would you like to move? Uh, yeah, I would. Well, I will take a f quite a few knocks from these chaps, won't I? Um, Possibly. Uh, so, so would that have been an action to have persuaded him? Can I? Can I then to use the bonus? The persuasion, yes. Okay. Can I then use the bonus to say to everyone else, um, there may be a peaceful resolution to this. Uh, something like that, just to sort of proffer it to the group sure. that maybe to support me in this, possibly. Um, okay. And then, and then I'll stay where I am, and then okay. I'll shield up. Seed, it is your turn. Phaser, you're on deck afterwards. Okay, so hearing that, Seed is going to ready an arrow um, and aim it once again up over the ridge. Um, and then use their bonus action to call up to the person they're aiming at. I don't want to have to use this, you know. <laughs> Make me an intimidation check. Very intimidating. It's a seven. You didn't mean it to be intimidating. You don't know if they've taken it as intimidating either, but you certainly said it. Um, okay, is that all you'd like to do? That is everything from Seed. Okay, Phaser, your turn. Uh, yeah, also uh, respecting Sixsmith's uh, shout, um, I would like to prepare my fire bolt. But to do this, I have a little small um, device, which is usually my little lighter, which I use for the tinderbox. Um, and I just adjust it. Um, and I'd like to, sh to shoot a small, well, it does go out to 120 foot, but I'd like to shoot 60 foot up into the air um, towards the two archers that are uh, um, not 60 foot, because that would probably torch somebody. A, a safety shot. Let's just say that. It's not going to... Like a warning shot over their heads. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd like to send a warning shot over the top so that people can see. Okay, so you pull back your contraption and you let off this uh, shot. 
uh, fire and it just again it's about a fist size glob of what well, looks like molten um almost like molten water just flying forwards and again it flies arcs over their head it's an easy enough shot to angle you don't know what effect it's had yet mm. but that, that's your turn yeah. anything else you'd like to do uh, n- not, uh i'd just like to shout as well um uh, uh there's more where this came from and then you know Oh, I'll make an intimidation check. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's not going to work. <laughs> oh dear, here we go. 13. So. It's certainly adorable, possibly intimidating. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Um, <laughs> next up is the archers then. And they knock arrows, pull the mac, and then just glance down to the captain on the floor. And you sense they are holding their action too. Next up, it is the turn of the captain, who's just lying on the ground going, Oh, so much pain. Oh, it's not all right. Right. And he kind of pulls himself up. He does himself and goes, Right, well, I can see we got off on the wrong foot. Uh, my name's uh, Draxilius Sparrus. It's a pleasure to meet you. I used to be a captain. Some call me uh, Captain Drax. Very famous. You've probably heard of me. Anyway, I think it's a pretty good deal. So if you don't mind, we'll just be off, right? No harm, no foul. Thought we could get you. Clearly couldn't. Are we still in combat or are we out of combat? Um, I'm going to say we are pausing combat. Oh, and if anyone takes any actions that contradict that, we'll fall back into initiative are order. Are we seriously leaving these deserters alive? They will attack other people on the roads after us. Scout's honour. Won't do that. Look, at you can trust me. Captain Drex. You are uh, a deserter. Drax. I just have to look at your bleeding arm to know you do not live in truth. Right, well, look, look, thing is, right, Legion's not for everyone. Look, Silver, did yes, ten I know, years, mate. I know did my well ten years. Legion's not for everyone. I left through legal means. Why oh, you? right, well, we could all leave through legal means if we wanted to. Some of us didn't have a choice. Wronged I was. Framed, mate. Framed. Oh, I'm sure. What? Make what an are insight you check. For? Okay. Well, you know, twenty-two. This or that. I mean, there's an element of truth in what he's saying. You're, you it's... don't know where. <laughs> this was definitely someone who's answer, not. Were you kicked out because you were framed? Well, let me put it this way: I was uh, up north with the lads, and. Uh, we were asked to, you know, scout over the border, and something happened. I don't know what. We just woke up. Everyone around us was dead. Got blamed on me as a captain, and we thought, well, we could stay and get, you know, hanged. Or we could retire early. And I believe this story is the truth. He's telling Make me. an insight check. Oh, another one. Okay. Uh, that's 24 this time. My God, I'm going to have to put higher DCs on this. We're going to have to go up to like Pathfinder 40 or something. Um, for all his fronts, there seems to be an element of truth. He believes what he is saying, at least in this instance. So oh. this happened to you in Nermian Guard? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right up by the border, yeah. But you don't know what attacked you. Well, of course I bloody don't know when you would attack me. I'd have killed it. Captain Drex, most fearsome soldier in the army. Well, well yes, that's well, not I've strictly not heard true because you, so. um, six people just walking down a road with a mule just um, put you on the floor. All right, I didn't say I was the best. I just said the most fearsome. I mean, that can mean many things, couldn't it? Uh, I didn't. I hadn't seen the ferocity yet. I was looking forward to it. But, well, um... you just be lucky, like old matey boy here, and he pokes uh, Ripper in the tummy, which is, you know, rock hard. It's like parking mom is like, oh, Ripper, but oh. Yeah, well, you know, he's, 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 you know, big. Uh, maybe we can come to some kind of arrangement if you can give us some information that might help us and maybe some support on our travels. I so, see, want we are... nothing from these people. We either kill them or we leave them. I mean, leaving sounds pretty good. I mean, we, I, I don't want to die. Do, do you want to die, boys? Yeah. And he turns around and then the soldier's like, eh, no, boss, if it's all the same to you, I'd, I'd rather not die. Is, <laughs> can we just go? 
Drax. Well, I cannot kill in cold blood, but I will if attacked, and I will defend my my soldiers. Drax, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's me, Captain Drax. My decision is I'm going to let you go. However, if I hear you've been pestering anyone else, I'm going to grab your dreadlocks, shove them so far down your throat with my pole, and you better hope you pass out before you die. A ripper walks off. I mean, that... That, that's fair enough, right, lads? That's fair enough. Get caught. Dread... Right, yeah, fair enough. Uh, he says nothing else. He kind of looks at you all. As, a, as, an additional, as additional sort of um, fear factor, I would like to sort of mentally order my bird to use its short teleport behind them, uh, which causes a small 10-foot explosion of fire. Um, but it doesn't catch anyone. Bloody hell, what was... Right, yeah, explosions, oh, big guy. Davies, um, I don't know uh, much about this, so I'm not being involved. But I imagine if they're going to um, be peaceful, Captain Drax, you're going to be peaceful from here. Oh, yeah, probably, my armor. You probably don't need all your weapons or, um, or your armor or probably any of the things you're carrying that um, aren't ne needed for survival. It'd probably make it safer, wouldn't it? Now, look. Mate, right. Not that I don't appreciate my life, because, you know, it's pretty great. But you know where we are, right? You know how close No, I, I, I actually, I have no idea where I am. I'm, uh, I think it's called Andres Bass, but this yeah, is about right, as much as I know. I'm right, not so really from around here. Surely so. the roads would be safer without, uh, you know, bandits without on you them and it? so on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the roads. Road. Roads would be safer, guys, without saying. But we don't live in the roads. Live in the bloody roads. The legions will get us in five minutes. We, you know, round here, right? We are so close to the blighted wastes. There's all sorts over there, mate. All sorts. Mm. Monsters. Some of them. Some of them. As big as him. Is this, the, is this where you're heading now, then? Well, yeah, it's where we've been hiding, because no one wants to go there. And I'll be honest, right? I'll happily give up my sword and my, mm. uh, or, sorry, my spear and all my bits for mm. the sake of my life. I just don't really want to then get eaten by the first creature I come across. We need something to defend ourselves. Oh, I totally understand that, but the same things you can defend yourself with, you see, you've, you've only proved them to use them in attack. So, um... Well, you... all right, look, you got me there. Not gonna lie. What about this? Legion's honour. We You're not part of the people. Legion, are you? I think you've left the yeah, Legion. If all right, I've understood. Right. The Legion well, honour is a bloody stain on his arm. Okay, so this is not a good thing, huh? Well, no need to be literal about it, mate, all right? Just because, you know, you, you got out, look, we didn't all have the choice. All right, look, on the word of Captain Drax... I'm confused. Well, what I feel no like reasons. is maybe you could prove that you're, um, that you're going... You have good intentions, especially to my friend Octavius here, who... who I, think, I think the phrase is, thinks you're scum. Oh, I won't kill them, but I'll be reporting their location to the Legion as soon as we arrive. Right. See, so that doesn't seem very good for you, does it? Um, I've had worse days. I mean, I've had better days, a lot better days, but th this isn't even close to worse yet. Okay, um, there's a lot in there I, I don't want to unpack. Um, I'm just thinking, like, maybe you could offer your services in a positive light to the next people that you... In fact, we've got a friend trying to trying to get to Ember Spire, is that what it is? What was her name, Faisal? Elandra. Yeah. I don't I want you to go near her, sure? ever. It, that, that's a thing. There was a prayer to Andra. Don't go near her. Kill Andrew. Never heard of her, mate. No, I haven't touched good. her. But that's good. What kind of scum you think of? We're not going to attack lone people travelling on themselves. That's just despicable. No, they, you just attack six people that can beat the life out of you. I guess that's fair. I guess I that's mean, fair. With an it injured been fair. villager in the back. Oh, yes. We do need wagon. to keep moving, actually. So, um, I, I'm bored now. Are you bored, brother? These people? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was hoping they could give us some information about maybe where we were going or, you know, maybe give us some advantage in some way. But if there's nothing of use, I won't rob these people. Um, I won't leave them fully defenseless, um, but I won't, uh, I won't give them any more of my time. Look, how about this? We keep the weapons and the armor, I know what you're saying, but we'll give you all the gold we got on us, right? Shine a good faith. We'll tell you about the trap we set up the road. And then, we'll go that direction, and never meet you again. Yeah, Captain, that seems like a reasonable offer given the circumstance. Right, well, lads, it's, uh, it turns to me and goes, Now, I know what you're going to say, lads. We got no choice. So, you know, pony up. And you, Arturo, all the stuff you got in. Yeah, I know it's a bit dirty, mate. Don't worry, they'll wipe it off. They'll, they'll wipe mine. 
I would bastard like honestly, it's got fra- d- don't. It's fine. Just hand it over, mate. And Dick soon Smith they- says, keep enough to get to the nearest town or the nearest settlement, uh, and enough for you guys to eat. I don't want you robbing anybody else on the road just to just to make a little more coin. Right, you are. Right, you are. And they they hand over a pouch which has got roughly sixty golds in it. Let's say sixty two golds that they sort of walk over and give to Lack. Um, and there's like a little bit of money bloody giving away all the gold that's going on here. Well, we've got to keep our lives, mate. Let's keep quiet. And then they kind of, uh, Captain Drax also goes, right, so uh, about half a mile down the road, we set it up in case we were getting chased or something. There is, uh, you're going to find a big fallen tree. And tied to that is a rope. What you're going to want to do is step back about 50 feet and then pull the rope. All right, that way no one will get hurt. It set the trap off, but you won't be by it, so it won't accidentally fall on you or nothing. And then, uh, all's good, you know what I mean? Um, and you know, boys. I would also like to check that he's telling the truth about the trap. Inside mm. check. Um, that is a 21. Oh, he's truthful. You know, boys, everybody gets one chance. Maybe this is yours. You know, if we ever do meet again, and I sincerely hope we don't, maybe I can talk to you about uh, coming on board the Indherian army. Uh, it's far away, lots of opportunity for travel, new cultures and sites, but we're always looking for any range of people. We, we catch the dregs of society and we rise them back up to the cream. So maybe we can talk one day and you know your prime earning years are ahead of you. You know, they're, they're, they're right now. You need to get out there, get honest jobs and then maybe uh, I'll see you one day. Right, prime earning years. Got ya. Indian army. Scum in the air. Yep, that's us. Dregs of society. Right, shall we, uh... Right. May we never meet again, or my name isn't Captain Drax Sparris. And then he just runs down uh, with the others, <laughs> and the others just <laughs> follow terrible. him. I love it. Love it. It's terrible. Disney are going to be on the line. <laughs> I've got to be honest, I was expecting some Macho Man Randy Savage cream of the crop speech. No. <laughs> uh... Uh, well, you know, I did say his name is Draxilus Sparrus. That's not suable. And uh, yeah, they these goblins just disappear into the distance. They got a clatter of their tin pot armor as they disappear, and you are left on Ondra's Pass. I think as Ooh. the party, I assume, because Ripper's walked off ahead. He's sort of leaning up against a, a rock, and he's just like put his rubbing his hand over where his. Um, the spear went through oh, and it's going to be moaning and i cast healing word no no, no. Well, i was going to say he oh. sort of moves his hand and as he takes it away it, the, the wounds don't think there i would have laid the hands on myself oh okay cool tavius does it anyway because he's mad isn't he look he's tavius is just miffed quite a trick tavius, um i'm i'm sorry that we let them go i i hope it was the right thing to do it's not my it's land it's just like so. stone-faced again that's fine let's keep moving all right <sighs> Wish I fucking killed him, you know. Just people like um, that make me sick, right? Honestly, I just. Oh, we, 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 we are not judging. Are you injured at all? We're, no. um... <laughs> we're not judge and jury and executioner, you know. We're we're we are only soldiers in different clothes and different kinds of different places. So I do have one little problem, and I point to the arrow poking out of my shoulder. <laughs> Oh. Very well. Count. Um, Count to oh, ten. And uh, no, I d- oh, oh dear. And then what I the blood? healing word okay. on her. Uh, which heals you. Okay. That seems to have fixed it. Thank you. Seven points of Please healing. give me a longer countdown next time. That oh, was no. quite alarming. <laughs> yes, it's meant to be. It hurts less. Okay. If you say so. <laughs> is Seed still covering where the wound was? Yeah, Seed's hands are like okay. firmly over where the arrow went in and they seem incredibly freaked out that you've just done that. <laughs> you've never been shot by an arrow before Seed? Um, I have been injured by things, yes. Oh, okay. I'm just, and going, like, like... To, I'm just <laughs> like... going to check it quickly and Seed kind of looks at it but still seems incredibly reluctant to let anybody else see the wounded area and then kind of satisfied that it seems to be healed finally drops their hands you you might want to give it a wash anyway 
just um, for the staining. What, what, cold, <laughs> cold water only though. You don't want to use any hot water on blood, right? Cold salted, water only. Salted cold let, water. Yeah. Let oh, it soak. Blood. And then... Right, because I'm a human, so I have blood. Yeah, 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 of course. Of oh, course. yes. I. Oh, I think it's just covered up by where my armor is. You know, oh, there's so much blood. I'm going to go and find some cold <laughs> water. Thank you for the tip. I'm going to get that right out. You'll never even know it was there. I had a white, I had a white cloak before this one. Got blood on it. Stupidest decision I ever made was was washing it and. If you put it out in the sun, it can bleach it again. Oh, can it? Oh. Mm. Oh, I'll wash it first, and then yeah. I'll put it out. You could in the you sun. could put it on the back of the cart while we're while we're moving. <laughs> Real life. Okay. Real life household tips brought to you by Blood and Sun. <laughs> need to get rid of nappy stains. <clears throat> That's the way. <laughs> That's a good one. I might need to write that down. So, <laughs> um, so as you, this kind of battle ends and this, uh, the kind of villains run off into the distance, you travel that the extra half a mile and you do come to the trace with a fallen tree and you see the rope that was obscured and hidden uh, under the dirt. Um, Seed, didn't you have that, like, you know, little hand that helped you clean up? Oh, I can make that happen. And then I cast Mage Hand and a hand pops into life and kind of waves at you. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. He's a waves back. <laughs> it, it turns around and waves at you too. Black's like just looking at everything. Like he's seen his friend turn into a hawk and like a magic hand appear. He's just silently taking it in, looking a little bit bemused. Okay, so are you standing right by the rope as you pull it, or are you going to move back as you were instructed? Definitely move back. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, the point was I'm to, to move to, We'll right basically back. move, we'll probably move 80 feet back, right? Because I think Mei Chan's got a 30 foot. <laughs> and yeah. then we'll just let that do it. Okay. Maximum distance. <laughs> uh, so can you just make me an arcana check, please? Seed, we'll say, mm -hmm. for the Mage Hand, to see how well it can pull this. Absolutely. Oh, that's an 18. Okay. Now, the rope is not particularly strong, so it, it's not strong enough to... It's, it's there as a trigger, so it's, you know, it's supposed to be tripped, so Mage Hand doesn't have a problem. As it pulls it, um, a large portion of both of the sides of the, the ravine just collapse and fall where you would have been in front of you. And uh, there is now a large blockage in the road. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we'll have to start clearing away this then, won't we? Well, we're going to do this via a series of skill checks. Nope. Everyone can take one action. So uh, we're going to be looking for successes and passes. So choose carefully which skill you'd like to use and think how you'd like to use it. In front of you, uh, these large boulders have been triggered and formed loads of sand to slide down. As the mist has continued a little bit um, at this end of the ravine, it's kind of come back up. The, the sand, the stone on the side seems kind of wet and a bit muddy. And it's formed like these big clumps in the road around the, bo uh, around the boulders. So everyone gets one thing they can do. I don't mind who goes first. Okay. Phaser. Yes. Question: Can yeah. we maybe break off the top rafters of this cart around the side and use it as planks to put the wheels on, so they can go up, up over the rocks and over the top? Uh, I guess we need to see how how high this is up, but um, I I I don't know. Um, I I think that it's isn't it quite a rickety cart. Is it going to take the Pretty weight of the? You can is it going to take? Try. And I don't, I don't think the mule is a goat. No, I'm I don't mean. Swear. I know. I, I don't mean like. I don't mean that will just get us build us up right over the top. I just mean like as we're trying to get. If we don't manage to clear the dirt, at least there's an option where we can sort of position the wheel carts on the bits of the, the the like logs, so it has something to go over the top, so it's not just bound around on dirt. I don't know. Sure I yeah, maybe when we've got some more of the uh, upper area cleared, maybe that's a, a good thing to do just to did get you, us over the hump. Did you say that the ground was muddy underneath and not very solid? It's kind of a mix of large boulders and soft earth that's kind of falling in between. Right. So I would it's, like uh, to use yeah, it's just like a slurry. Produce fl flame to dry out and crack the earth so it's a lot more solid. 
Okay, can you make me a... I'm going to say that's an Arcana check. Okay. Can I ask, before you do that, could it be mm. perhaps that just the bit in front of us that's solidified? I wouldn't like to use up all of the mud in case um, that's useful for my potteriness. But okay, sure. I don't know, just in case. I will not, I will not cake all of the mud. Cake? Thank okay. you. Get your priorities right, eh, Fraser? Um, that's a 10. So with a 10, you attempt to dry this uh, mud with your producing flames. And it does seem to certainly scorch the first little bit, but you get the sense that there is a large amount of slurry that has fallen down, and you don't know how deep in that has gone from your current position. Okay, would someone else like to make the next attempt? Yeah, uh, Sixsmith wants to do that thing um that you do in all of the god of war games where you get your foot like onto a something getting ready to kick it and then you've got a tap circle to like wind it up and then he's going to kick the boulder as hard as possible to try and crack it in half you're going to try and kick a boulder why don't you sean why hey, don't you just I'm chris not, redfield it i'm not no, chris, chris, yeah, see, just chris, redfield just chris it, redfielding it and, chris and redfield punching it. the boulder until it you're explodes. the one who's like oh, i've got big glistening muscles you know no, but he's more like he's more like sort of lithe. He's not he's not like Ripper, where he's totally ripped. He's more like Bollywood ripped. And then he kicks the boulder to try and shatter it, just so that it can maybe then be manipulated further from the okay from the so hardening of it. I'm telling you that will have a pretty high DC to shatter a boulder. But okay. you can certainly try. Well, can I do something similar then that perhaps isn't going to shatter the boulder, but perhaps is is going to weaken it then. I'm, I'm not hoping to shatter it, but just to weaken it and make it sort of... So hoping to kick a stone hard enough that it weakens. Yeah. You can certainly try. Uh, Sixsmith, can I just maybe just drop in there? Uh, Lack, can you give me a hand with your spear? And I'll use my quarterstaff. And maybe we can get some leverage under this thing and roll it in a different position. Oh, sounds like a good idea. Mine's a bamboo spear, so it might bend a little more. But um... yeah, well, you can be the extra sort of leverage, you know. Okay. The, okay. The, the, the lynch as you're getting that suggest... leverage, then I'll kick it, so that, I... it so that we can raise it with your leverage, and then I can push it out of the way with my foot. Sorry, okay. Faye. That's all right. Can I suggest that maybe it makes this a group effort? And um, I, I mean, I have fifty feet of rope. I don't know if anybody else does. And we have a cart with a mule who Lack seems to get on with very well. So maybe we could also <laughs> add the mule strength to this effort to move, dislodge the boulder. Okay, that so seems in so order to do logical. this, we will need then someone to make, I'm going to say Ripper to make a wisdom check to place the, um, uh, the pivot in the correct place, the lever, sorry. Uh, it would take uh, Lack to make an animal handling check to persuade the mule, and uh, ah. Six Smith is going to make a strength check, to sorry an athletics check to kick the boulder at the exact right moment to get it to flip. <laughs> I got a fifteen in my wisdom. Okay. Hey, come on then, muley. Come on, muley. Come with <laughs> me. Oh, I rolled an eighteen. That's twenty. Is it dirty? Twenty. Okay. <laughs> Six uh, eleven athletics. on my strength check. <laughs> it's athletics. Oh, okay. What are the chances? I'd just like to say that we've. I think I've seen more animal handling checks in this single session than I've seen. Yeah. I've seen. <laughs> yeah, that's D &D very true. Experience. You've got a mule with you. You're just jealous. You rolled a five, Brad. You just. I, I am. <laughs> the mule does not like me. <laughs> Even Smith, though you like it. athletics, uh, I got eight on my athletics. Okay. Do, is it ten minutes since? Has ten minutes passed since the battle? I would say yes. By the time you've kind of had that conversation okay. and moved off, it has now okay. been ten minutes. Inspiration has faded, uh, which just leaves then uh, six Smith and uh, C. Sorry, Fa uh, Phaser and Seed. What would you like to do to aid? Um, I, I'd like to perhaps before the the chaps yank and kick and pull and do whatever they've got to do with the boulder is just have a little um because you said it was a mix of slurry and mm. rock which has been dried out a little bit but not very much so i'm wondering if um there's any way of, of... i don't think i can use any of my potter's tools to try and affect this because they're quite small <laughs> but um, they would be quite delicate tools yeah, yes exactly so um i'm wondering if maybe there's a way of of 
Mm, maybe maybe climbing is, is it one big boulder with a slurry around it or is it so a, it's several boulders i will okay. say that this is one particularly big boulder so the um the challenge is to see whether this technique would work if it works and you can replicate it and move at least the big okay. boulders you will still have some loose mud in the way and smaller slurry which still does need dealing with okay so i think maybe what i'll do is because the rope needs to be tied around the 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 boulder so maybe if I use the, the pitons that I've got in my uh, dungeoneering thing, I might climb the boulder and see if there's a handy way of tying this rope around it. Is it 50 Marvelous. foot round or is it going to be... Oh, no, it's not, nowhere near that big. It's, okay, say, it's large, but not not huge. Uh, so okay. I would say make me a dexterity check to see how well you can tie these things on. Oh, it's good. It's 19. Okay, marvellous. Which just leaves seed. What would you like your contribution to be? Um, so Seed has a shovel, so um, they're going to try and get themselves into a position where they can help to basically remove some of the mud around kind of where the boulder is to basically make it a bit easier to manoeuvre. Um, okay. And so I wasn't sure whether they were going to need to climb in order to get to the right position to do that. No, I mean, it, it's large, it's not It's not huge. It's, think of it looking like a big boulder at the beach rather than... Um like Indiana Jones ball of death. So it's kind of large enough that they can easily climb on it and kind of maneuver around it, but the actual pulling it away isn't as simple as a big strong person just lifting it. Okay. Um yeah, so basically they're going to like maneuver themselves as best they can to try and pull mud away around as much as possible just to keep it so that it's like the least effort required for everyone else to get okay. this to move. Okay. Hmm. I don't, I'm going to call that an intelligence check because you're trying okay. to make sure you're doing it in the correct places to kind of remove things. Ooh. And that is going to be... Uh, 17. Okay. So after setting up this plan and working together, um, Seed starts removing some of the mud with their shovel and uh, Phaser has really secured these ropes tightly with pitons straight into the boulder. Um, Black starts stroking the mule behind its ears again and it kind of moves forwards. Uh, at the exact same moment, Ripper pushes down with both spears, mostly leaning on his quarter staff. The boulder just starts to go and uh, Sixsmith kicks it not with it the best kick he feels that the kick wasn't very good but to everyone else they see it's just enough that it tips and rolls to the side and then kind of loose mud flows down and you spend a good kind of hour and a half just clearing your way through in similar fashion and say you all will take a point of exhaustion for this because it is exhausting work um octavius having Told you johnny it... loves the exhaustion he loves I it do. i do i love it uh, uh, just having kind of tried to dry out some mud and seeing it's a little bit ineffectual you kind of join in using cantrips things to just start clearing the earth around it and slowly you manage to pull the cart through um, could someone just roll me a d8 please who, who hasn't rolled one in this thingy yet I, have, I, I don't mind doing it I don't think go for it I don't know it's working Oh no, uh, can someone else buy that? I've <laughs> got a two. Was that a one? It was a two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. as as a one. Two. Marvellous. So actually, um, as you're travelling, the weather clears up again. It starts to dry out. There's that fresh autumn crisp wind kind of blowing through. It's a little bit chilly. Certainly those of you from warmer climes are really starting to feel it now. But you have a completely uneventful journey through the rest of the ravine it gets to about seven eight o'clock on this the third day of travel and you find yourself exiting as you come into broad plains of dried grass as the little green that had been in the ravine at the top slowly fades and autumn seems to resume uh, and that is where we are going to end tonight's session hey lovely hey. Fast. lovely so thank you all for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed. And next week we will return to see how this quick one session journey I planned can be strung out even longer. And if the party ever will reach Cinderbone. Until then, have a wonderful week and may the Great Mother guide you.
Okay. Bye.